was enjoying my perfect Friday night watching my favorite YouTuber's latest video when it got interrupted by a phone call. Tessa, the cops arrested me! Dress as my mom and come bail me out! That was Katie, my annoying cousin. She's the biggest troublemaker I know, which is why my aunt sent her to live at my house, in hopes that we could help change her attitude. Poof! So now, I have to sneak into mom's closet and borrow some of her clothes. Hmm. How do I apply makeup to look older? Ugh. That'll have to do. So, officer, what trouble she in this time? She vandalized a car. Not me, mom. Blame the dumb car that got in my way. Jeez. If I were really Katie's mom, I would let her rot in jail until she came to her senses. I was about to lead Katie out of there when a boy grinned at me and said, Madam, can you bail me out too? Sorry, but no. You're not my problem. Okay, well, then can you at least give me your number? I spotted Katie frown at him, then she pulled on my arm. Let's go home, Mom. Katie, can't you grow up? I can't cover for you forever. You'll do it, else I may just accidentally slip out your little secrets to your parents. Ugh. That threat sure is getting old. Okay, so I didn't bail out Katie out of choice. You see, she has something over me. The thing is, I have a passion for baking, but my parents think this is a waste of time. I knew they'd never knowingly pay for my cooking classes, so I told them I needed money to join an extra study class. I know it sounds bad, but I did apply to work at a coffee shop bakery so I could pay them back while also gaining experience. But then Katie discovered my secret, and now she's using it to control me. <sighs> then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I arrived home to find my parents waiting up for me in the living room. Tessa, you were out partying, weren't you? Why do you keep on disobeying us? And is that my dress? Why can't you be more like Katie? She's really improved her grades. I turned around to see that Katie was nowhere to be seen. She must have quickly escaped through the back door to her room. What a minx. But my parents still believed she's the golden girl. Poof. It's rubbish, of course. The good grades she brought home were all by cheating. If it weren't for Katie knowing my secret, I so would have exposed her by now. Actually, besides Katie, there's also Celia, my best friend, who also knows about this. She may be a hothead, but when it comes to my secrets, I know her lips are sealed. Hey, Tessa, you have to see this. Celia waved her phone in my face. Hang on, that was BitKit Bakes, my all-time fave YouTube channel. I'd been following this guy for ages. He was so talented. Oh, and he always wore this cute kitty mask. Look at his hands. They're so beautiful. And how I adore his warm voice. I bet he's really handsome, too. Celia is so smitten with boys. Ugh, it's Katie again. She's left her lipstick in the canteen and I've got to fetch it for her and take it to some cafe in town. This is ridiculous. I'm sure she could survive without her stupid lipstick for one afternoon. I walked into the cafe and spotted Katie sitting with two boys. Hmm, wasn't that the boy from the cop station? Turns out he's called Max and he's Katie's new boyfriend and the other guy is Cody. Both of them are college students. Hey Tessa, you should stay for cake. Seeing as I was here, I may as well have something sweet, right? So I ignored Katie's eye rolls in my direction and joined them. The waiter brought some chocolate fudge cake over and yum, it sure looked good. I took a forkful of it and hmm, something wasn't quite right. This cake could use some salted caramel. Poof, a cake needs to keep its original flavor. If you add that to it, it'll be far too sweet. Oh, how rude. I was only voicing my opinion. Right at that moment, Celia phoned me. I just answered when she started screaming so loudly and I had to hold my phone away from my ear. Tessa, Tessa, Tessa! Celia, is everything okay? I know how to impress the Big Kid Bakes guy. We must make him a DIY gift. A chocolate resin phone case. What do you think? Am I a genius or what? 
I noticed Max, Cody, and Katie all giving me strange looks. Jeez, this was so embarrassing. So I quickly hung up on Celia, then made my excuse to leave. Ugh. I liked it better when only I knew about Bitkit Bakes. I watch his videos every day and daydream about baking with him. But now Celia's obsession over him was kind of tiring me out. She texted me nonstop to ramble about him and dragged me into her silly fan projects. She even joined this online fan club of his and they all talked about how fit he looks, how handsome he must be. Hello, does anyone here really care about cooking? At least work meant I had a break from Celia's mithering. Ugh, what was he doing here? He bought two cups of coffee, then asked to borrow my phone because his was out of battery. I reluctantly handed over my precious phone, but then I heard a ringtone. Max excitedly took his ringing phone out of his pocket and said, So now I have your phone number, cute girl. What? The cheek of him. I'm his girlfriend's cousin. Has he no shame? I gave him a dumbfounded look, but he just smiled, handed back my phone, and winked at me. I saved my number in your phone. Give me a call. Then he left. He just reached the door when I snapped out of my daze. The phone case. Our chocolate phone case. Why did he have it? It's one of a kind and we've already sent it to Bitkit Bakes. Didn't we? I was about to run after him to clear this up when Katie appeared. Max, why did it take you so long to buy coffee? Then she stormed over to the counter as soon as she spotted me. Stay away from my boyfriend or your secret goes parent public. Okay? Katie glared at me and dragged Max away. Even though they were leaving, I could still hear her voice. Don't talk to that girl. I don't like her. Huh? What on earth? Who wants her boyfriend anyway? How irritating. One evening, I was lying on the couch and thinking about whether Max could really be Bitkit Bakes when Celia excitedly ran over. I have our mysterious idol's phone number! Oh no, here we go again. Celia was way too excitable sometimes. So a secret source that's in the fandom sent it to me. I wonder if this is his real number. You really believe that's Bitkit's number? Let's just give it a try. We have nothing to lose. It would be a lie to say I wasn't any tiny bit curious. So I entered the phone number and as soon as I pressed the call, Max's name appeared on the screen. Huh? What's this? I quickly hung up and turned to tell Celia that it was just a fake number. If Max is really our idol, then I don't want Celia getting muddled up with my crazy cousin's love life. Celia just shrugged and said, It's okay, I'll find another way. Then she did that sticking tongue out concentration face of hers as she fiddled around on her phone. The next day, I got home from my shift feeling a little worn out but Celia still wouldn't give me a break. She came right over and dragged me out somewhere. Where are we going? I asked, but Celia just kept silent. Then we stopped in front of a small white house. At that point, Celia said, my source says this is Bitkit Bakes home. We're about to meet the most amazing guy ever. Before I could react, Celia ran to ring the doorbell. And as soon as the door opened, standing in front of us were Max and Katie. Tessa, why are you here? You know him? Uh, um, this is Max, Katie's boyfriend. We were on our way to a friend's party, but it seems like we have the wrong house. Sorry for bothering you. Then I hurriedly pulled Celia's hand to leave, but Max stopped us. Oh yeah? Then you must have come to the right house. We're having a party, so join us. I quickly waved my hand to refuse, but Celia immediately said, That would be great! And then ignoring Katie's death stares, pulled me inside. Hmm, so turns out Max lives here with Cody and this guy called Trevor. I'll find out which of these three boys is our idol. Wait for it. Celia made up some excuse about loving their decor and wanting to see the rest of it for inspiration. Trevor, who seemed to like her, jumped at the opportunity to show her around. Meanwhile, I wandered into the kitchen to try and solve the Bit Kit Bakes mystery myself. Max was in there making himself an egg sandwich, but oh my god, 
Had he never touched a whisk before? He's so clumsy. I don't think there would be much of the egg left in the bowl after he's done whisking. The kitchen counter was full of food for the party, so I decided to give them a hand. Hmm, let's see. I spotted a bowl of cookie mixture, which looked like it could use some special ingredient, so I reached for the jar of sugar. And as expected, a hand stopped me. But Cody? What are you doing? You use brown sugar for cookies, not white. You don't want to end up with a load of air pockets, do you? Yes, of course I knew that. And I also knew BitKid had once said those exact words in one of his previous clips. So, the anonymous idol is... Cody? But Max's phone case was the one we sent to our idol. And the idol's phone number that Celia found was also Max's. This was so confusing, and I needed answers. So I asked Max to go outside with me. You aren't BitKid Bakes, right? Why do you have that phone case? Oh, so you figured it out! Yeah, I know you sent it to Cody, so I intercepted it. I'm also the anonymous fan who gave Celia this address. It's fate, baby. You and me are meant to be together. Then he lunged towards me with outstretched arms. Oh my god, did he have tentacle arms or something? I couldn't escape from his grip! Then who should appear but, yep, Katie. She charged over, then pushed me falling to the ground. Cody appeared and tried to stop the fight, but Katie's flailing arms knocked into him and caused his wrist to brush against the hot barbecue grill. I quickly went to check on Cody, but Katie just screamed out, I hate you! Then ran off with a shameless Max in hot pursuit. We then went to Cody's room to get the first aid box. Hang on, I recognize that mask. Don't worry, I'll keep your secret. But maybe this arm shouldn't be on screen for a while. Celia has like the best detective sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe a cute girl like you should wear the cat mask for the next few videos. What do you think? Are you sure? Your fans might speculate that the girl would have some kind of special relationship with you. Gosh, what am I saying? Wake up, Tessa. I should go. Right. There's something important waiting for me to handle at home. What a messy day. I couldn't carry on being under Katie's control any longer. I needed to confess all to my parents before she told them. Only, when I walked through the door, I heard these weird sounds coming from the living room. It was Katie bawling her eyes out on the couch. I ignored her and was about to go upstairs, but suddenly, she ran over to me and hugged me. Tessa, I'm so sorry for pushing you. I never meant for anyone to get hurt. I just really love Max, and it breaks my heart knowing he's such a womanizer. It's okay, but you seriously deserve way better than that jerk. So Katie and I made up, and she also promised that she wouldn't blab my secret to my parents. But I want to tell them the truth. I mean, I can't lie to them forever, right? And when they see how much baking means to me, They'll support me, right? Hey guys, so I entered a baking contest and invited my parents along. And guess what? I won the best newcomer prize! Eek! Better still, my parents congratulated me and told me that if I loved baking this much, I should follow my dreams. Oh, and I did use the prize money from the contest to pay them back. Cody's been a massive help. He's given me some great tips and, actually, we've started dating. It's early days, but being with him makes me feel as happy as eating freshly made cookies. And as for Celia, well, she's still pretty convinced that Trevor's her idol. <laughs> One day I'll introduce her to the real BitKid Bakes. Soon. Only three more steps to go. Three, two, one. Sophie! Oh man, busted. Okay, so it's because today at school, I persuaded a friend to test out my skateboard. But come on, how was I supposed to know she'd end up breaking her leg? Oops. I called your dad and he's arranging your school transfer. What? Ugh. Is anyone else's mom way over the top, like mine? My dad's away on business trips a lot, so the majority of the time it's just me and her. 
but we're basically chalk and cheese. Everything I do seems to annoy her. Skateboarding or partying, even breathing, I suppose. Jeez, doesn't she remember what being young was like? Or was she born this boring? Then whenever something happens, she always rings dad and snitches on me. Ugh, speak of the devil. Oh, hi, dad. Sophie, it's all sorted. You're transferring to King's West High School next week. But, but dad, I don't want to move schools. You brought it onto yourself, young lady. I have an old friend teaching there. I've told her to keep an eye on you. So, you better behave yourself. Poof, he thought he could scare me. As if. I ain't afraid of some cranky teacher. So comes my first day at this place, and this teacher, friend of dad's, Miss Janet Clark, wouldn't quit gopping at me, and she kept on calling on me to answer her stupid questions. Um, no thanks. Ugh, I needed to liven this boring class up. So when the teacher briefly left the room, I immediately put Vaseline on the cap of her water bottle. It was so funny watching her failing to open it and ended up with a smudged hand. Then when she asked the class who was responsible, I grinned as I raised my hand. Another time, I put an air horn on her chair leg, so as soon as she sat down, there was an ear-splitting sound. It's as if she just farted. <laughs> Impressive. How do you think up such crazy pranks? You're even better than me. Huh? I froze for a few seconds. Who was this handsome boy, and why hadn't I noticed him before? Turns out he's Dylan. And like me, he's prone to getting in trouble. We were talking to each other passionately when I felt a hand pat on my shoulder. It was Miss Clark. She led me into the corridor, and I expected her to shout at me, but surprisingly, she didn't get angry or anything. Instead, she asked if I was having a hard time. Hmm? How odd. The next morning, I was about to enter the classroom when some popular girls stopped me. Who are you trying to impress? Better know your place, newbie. She's just another plain Jane. What are you worried about, Rebecca? There's no way Dylan likes her. Stay away from Dylan, else. Excuse me? This snooty girl just messed with the wrong person. And that's how we ended up pulling each other's hair until I managed to get a hold of her wrist and was about to give her a taste of my shoulder throw. Then Miss Clark intervened. The so-called Queen Bee quickly fled the scene. Then Miss Clark led me out to the schoolyard for a walk. She told me that this girl Rebecca was Dylan's ex-girlfriend. Oh, how pathetic. Our Becky has a crush on her ex. Then Miss Clark continued asking if I really felt okay, as she thought there must be some reason behind my rebellious behaviors. Just like that, my emotions got the better of me, and I blurted out how I hated moving schools. And the only good thing about this new place was Dylan. And could you believe it? She actually gave me some flirting tips to impress Dylan, and also told me to text her if I had any problems. Hmm, maybe I'd been wrong about Miss Clark. She was actually pretty cool, and I started talking to her pretty often. Then one day, I arrived home to see my bedroom door was ajar. I peeked inside and spotted Mom on my bed, iPad in hand, reading my diary on it. Mom, seriously, can you please give me some privacy? Sophie, what's this about a downhill skating event? Do you want to die? It's none of your business. Ugh, Mom was so controlling. She wouldn't let me wear the clothes I wanted or even fangirl over the idols I liked. Feeling so wronged, I called Miss Clark to let out this frustration. She was so understanding, saying how adults sometimes make mistakes too. And my mom was in the wrong this time. Then said I should sign up for the skating event, as I was young and therefore I should fight for my dreams. I wish mom understood me like you do. You must be a wonderful mom. Your children are so lucky. She fell silent for a moment, then told me that as much as she wanted to be a mother, but she was divorced and had no kid. Adopt me then. I'd rather be your daughter than my mom's. Then she gently smiled at me. Thanks to Miss Clark, my stuffy home life felt a bit better. While at school, thanks to her matchmaking, Dylan and I were now a couple. Yay! Rebecca thus gave me dirty looks all the time in class. But tough luck, sweetie. And our one-month anniversary finally arrived. 
Today, Dylan's taking me out for sushi. Yum! But I'd only had one bite when a familiar figure rushed over. My mom glared at Dylan, then dragged me home. Don't you ever talk to that awful boy again! You hear me? That kind of troublemaker is nothing but a bad influence. Cut ties with him ASAP! This was insane! But thankfully, Dylan overlooked my mom's craziness, and we continued dating secretly. But then one morning, I texted and called Dylan a bunch of times, but there was no reply. Was something wrong? We just had the best date last night, but now, nothing. I rushed to school, searching for Dylan, worriedly asking everyone if they had heard anything from him. When Rebecca suddenly approached me, Dylan could have died thanks to you. Seems like you and your crazy mom are cut from the same cloth. Okay, so turns out that after Dylan dropped me off after our date, he ended up in an accident. Luckily, he wasn't hurt too bad, but he was convinced someone had tampered with his brakes while he made a quick stop at the 7-Eleven near my house. And, yep, that must have been my mom, since he also saw her leave the store. How could she do that? She's ruined my life! Dylan broke up with me right after that. No way was I staying anywhere near her. So, I packed a bag and fled to the one place I felt safe. And here I am, at Miss Clark's house. <sighs> Peace and quiet at last. Oh, what's this? She looked so pretty when she was young. I turned a few more pages, then... Huh? Why does this man resemble... My dad? Then I saw a scribble. Janet, Bob, forever. Huh? It was my dad. So, she wasn't just his old friend. She was his ex. A thought suddenly popped into my head. Could she be my real mom? Maybe dad let me transfer to her school so we would be reunited. <laughs> Oof, forgive me. I must have watched too many TV dramas. <laughs> but honestly, how amazing would it be if she was my mom? <sighs> my real mom was such a nightmare. I went to the kitchen to see Miss Clark preparing dinner, and couldn't help but blurt out, Mom? She got extremely emotional, then pulled me in for a warm embrace and called me her daughter. Suddenly the phone rang. It was Dad. He told me to go home immediately or he'd stop my allowance. Miss Clark told me not to be worried and just go but I had to show some attitude to let mom know that I wouldn't back down easily. So from then on, as soon as I was home, I just went straight to my room without even looking at mom. And also, every time she said anything annoying, I kept replying with, What's wrong with you? My teacher told me to do so. Stop overreacting. And you know what happened next? Yep, mom called dad. Again. I reported it to Miss Clark as usual, and she told me that if I wanted dad to stop listening to mom, I had to tell him she was having an affair. What? Wasn't that too much? Did Miss Clark still have feelings for my dad? Was she only being nice to me so she could worm her way back into his life? After that, I didn't talk to her as much, and tried to avoid her at school, just to be safe. But then one day after lessons, I found her waiting by my locker, looking all glum. She told me it was her birthday, but like every other time, she had no one to celebrate it with. If only you'd be by my side this year, my daughter. So, I agreed to go for dinner with her, and then for convenience, I made reservations at mom's restaurant. Hmm, maybe this wasn't such a bad idea. I mean, Miss Clark might be able to talk some sense into her, right? They could even actually get on. But as soon as Miss Clark walked in, mom's face dropped. Janet, what are you doing here? Our restaurant is fully booked. Please leave. The two argued back and forth for a while, and I couldn't stand it anymore. Why are you so rude, Mom? She's my teacher. Mom then stormed off in a rage while Miss Clark and I just ignored her and carried on with our birthday plan. But as she was eating the baked lobster dish, she suddenly turned a funny color, then threw up. We took her to the emergency room, and the doctor said this was down to Ipecac of vomit-inducing medicine. Who else is to blame? How could my mom be so cruel? Sophie, I'm fine. I'm sure your mom meant no harm. 
Mom looked furious and rushed over to Miss Clark. I had to pull her back, and then I told her she didn't deserve to be my mom. She was speechless and burst into tears. But it was too late. I announced I would move out of the house and stay with Miss Clark instead. So I went home and packed straight away, then left. But Mom wouldn't quit following me that whole week. It's super annoying. So Miss Clark came up with a new idea. We should move somewhere where Mom wouldn't find us. Huh? Was it a bit too sudden? But this was the only way I could be rid of my freaky mom. So we moved to a little house in the suburbs. Miss Clark took good care of me and completed all of my school transfer procedures. The first few days were so much fun. We had a really good time together. However, I started to notice odd little things, such as she fed me pizza every single day. Pizza and pizza only. She also insisted I wear these worn old clothes and called me Dumpling? What a weird nickname. At first I just wondered why she did that, but then it started to bug me, so I asked her to stop. To my surprise, she started crying. <sighs> Looks like I was stuck with this awful nickname. Things at home seemed off, and the new school was just as terrible. From the very first day, I again became the target of the mean girls. But one day, as they tried to stop me passing them, one of their faces suddenly turned pale. Uh, huh? Isn't that Alice's gross old shirt? Alice who? You know, Alice. The dumb pling. She wore the exact same shirt with the word smart printed on it. I remember this vividly as I used to laugh at how brazen of that stupid girl for wearing a shirt saying smart. My god, even the trace of my cigarette butt on its flap? It's still there? But she's dead. Then they all looked at each other in fear and ran away. Uh, uh, huh? Chills ran down my spine. I didn't know who this Alice was and I didn't want to. The only thing I knew was I needed to get out of this place immediately. So I rushed home to pack my things before Miss Clark got back from work. But it was too late. Dumpling? Where are you going? You have to stay with Mommy. Then she quickly locked the door, dragged me inside, and started acting like a psychopath. Eat up, my dumpling. Why are you so sad? It's seafood pizza, your favorite. I'm sorry I didn't let you eat it before, but... Now you can have it all you want. I'll buy this for you every day. Panicked, I didn't know how to hold out against this insane woman when someone kicked in the door. It was Dylan, followed by my parents. Sophie, here you are our baby. Oh, thank good God. I pushed Janet away and ran straight to them. But how did they find me? I decided to look into the case of my broken break again. As a few days after the accident, I came back to that 7-Eleven, and a cashier asked me if my mom came home safely the other day, as she saw a woman claiming to be my mom struggling by my motorcycle, saying there's some problem with it. That sounded way too fishy, so I asked to check the store's CCTV footage. And the culprit was not your mom as we all thought, but her. Huh? Why? She helped matchmake us. Why would she want to harm you? I don't know. Maybe she wants everyone to misunderstand and blame your mother. Luckily, our phones have still been sharing locations ever since we were dating, so I found you in time. Many thanks to you, Dylan. My father angrily looked at Miss Clark. Janet, things between us ended decades ago. Please get a hold of yourself. Oof, how ridiculous. Who do you think you are to assume this is about you? Dumpling is mine. She's my daughter, and she's staying with me. She broke down crying, and then admitted it all. From damaging Dylan's motorbike, to putting amnic medicine in her own food to fool people. I've tried everything. I can't believe it. How could a gentle person like her do such things? After the truth was revealed, everything gradually got back on track. I went back home, but still my mind constantly wandering back to her and why she did it. Until one day, I came home from school and was surprised to see that woman sitting on the couch in our living room having a coffee with mom. 
To be honest, I was a bit frightened at the sight of her, but she didn't look as unstable as before. It turned out that she'd just returned from a psychotherapy unit. She'd been suffering from her mental health since Alice, her daughter, passed away. Alice, aka Dumpling, was a stubborn teenager, just like me, and due to the strictness of her mum, she once left home in a temper and never came back as she got in a terrible car accident that night. So, as soon as Miss Clark saw me, she subconsciously wanted to turn me into her daughter to fix her past mistakes. Sophie, I'm truly sorry for the pain I caused you. I let my grief consume me and, as a result, I refused to accept how dark a place I was in. Teenagers are complicated. But please try to be more open-minded and show them love the correct way. Sophie's a good kid, and I don't want you making the same mistakes I did. Hmm. And so, everything ended in a good way. Although my mom and I still sometimes argue, now we both know how to control it. I also learned to share things with her so that we became closer. And now, when she calls dad, it's no longer to snitch on me, <laughs> but it's to talk about how our days went. By the way, I don't have to go on secret dates anymore either. There's my Prince Charming. How many times have I told him not to rev up the engine? It's almost the finish line. Just a little more. Come on, Bolt. We can make it. Yes, yes, we've done it again. So, as you can see, the winner was me, Matilda, along with my horse, the heroic Bolt. This is our third win in a row already. Woohoo! It may only be a small hometown race with a modest prize, but it's still gonna go a long way in supporting my grandparents' farm. Now, it's time for this guy to rest. Good boy, Bolt. You did amazing out there. A 16-hand stallion, healthy, glossy coat, and a well-mannered temperament. Geez, the horse dealers even follow me home now? I took a handful of hay, spun around, and hurled it at him. Go away! I don't want your stinking money. Bolt is not for sale. Right at that moment, my grandpa appeared. Matilda, that is no way to speak to our guest of honor. I apologize for my granddaughter's behavior. She's a firecracker at times. Teenagers, you know? Anyway, it's dinner time. Please join us for a home-cooked meal right this way. Huh? Guest of honor? Who could he be? Oh my god. It turns out the man was none other than Mr. Allen, the chairman of All Stellar Inc. Corp., the annual sponsor of my family's farm. I turned beet red and apologized profusely for being so rude to him. No problem, kiddo. I like your spirit. I thought it'd be a good idea to check out the farm I'm sponsoring, and I stumbled upon the racing tournament. Oh boy, you sure can race, can't you, girl? Not many can handle a wet track at that speed. We have our reservations about her skipping school and competing in such dangerous races. But Matilda's insistent that she was a part of this family, so it's her responsibility to help us, her only remaining relatives. Mr. Allen gave me this thoughtful look, then said, how about this? The annual sponsorship for your grandparents' farm stays the same. And on top of that, you can move in with me and have a proper education. Did I hear him right? I gasped. B but who will take care of my grandparents? Sweetie, we still have our health. We can run this place just fine. That's right, Maddie. Take your chance. Opportunities like this don't come twice. But what about Bolt? I can't go without him. Bring him along. I have a small horse farm where he can stay. You can help her out the stables, and we can call it payment for your school fees, alright? Well, I guess that's settled then. Yay! One week later, Mr. Allen sent his driver to pick me up, and the new chapter of my life started from here. Wait. Oh my god. This can't be it! Mr. Allen said it was a small horse farm, but this place, it's enormous! As soon as I stepped out of the car, a girl my age rushed over and hugged me. Matilda, you're finally here! I'm your new sister, Judy. I greeted her back with the widest smile. She seemed so sweet. She led me over to the front porch where Mr. Allen and a woman were waiting for me. It must be my new mom, but why was she giving me such a strange look? Before I could even introduce myself, she turned and walked into the house. Hmm, maybe she wasn't feeling very well? That evening, I dined on a lavish meal. We chatted lots and the Allens seemed fascinated by my childhood life at the farm. Especially Judy with her 10,000 questions. <laughs> Sis, so, um, 
Is it true that you have never seen your parents? Yeah, my father passed away in an accident before I was born, and my mom also left me when I was an infant. On hearing that, Judy gently comforted me while Mr. Allen smiled and said, Now, besides your grandparents, you also have us, your second family. You got a sister, a new dad here, and also your caring mom. Right, darling? Mrs. Allen flinched and dropped her fork. I immediately leaned over to ask, Mom, are you okay? But to my surprise, she just yelled at me. Don't call me that. Feeling flustered, I stared down at my plate. Had I done something wrong? Over the following days, I tried my best to get closer to mom, but I was always met with coldness in return. One time, seeing Mrs. Allen was resting outside, I brought her an iced coffee. But as soon as she saw me coming over, she placed her hat over her face pretending to be asleep. On another occasion, I complimented her dress but she just studied at me, then walked away. I really wanted her to like me but it was useless, she clearly detested me. <sighs> but at least I still have Judy and dad by my side. Judy tried reassuring me that mom was a good person and that she just needed a little more time to get to know me better. As for dad, not only did he send me to a top school, but he also encouraged me to follow my passion. All the afternoons when I got to watch horse racing and bet on the winning horse with dad were so much fun. And as I watched the horses gallop past, a thought crossed my mind. What if Bolt and I were the one on that track, winning the race and bringing back the huge prize money for my grandparents? I couldn't stop thinking about this. So one time, on the way back home from a race, I asked my dad if I could compete. And he didn't even hesitate to reply. Why not? You do have a talent. How about give it a go? Oh god, this was so exciting! My foster dad was the best and I couldn't wait to give this my all and make him proud. After that, he immediately got me a personal coach and a dedicated team of trainers and groomers for Bolt. I'd never felt so happy and Bolt had never looked so good. Everything was great, except that Mrs. Allen still seemed to have an issue with me. Every time I packed for practice, she always frowned and muttered stuff under her breath. Maybe she's irritated about the fact that an adopted child like me was receiving much more than I deserved, or something. But anyway, whether she liked it or not, with my talent, I'll quickly rise to be a brilliant rookie. One morning after practice, Judy came up to me and said, Matilda, can you teach me how to ride a horse? Uh, it might be a little scary for a first-timer. Are you sure you want to try? Yes, please. If I know how to ride, I can spend more time with dad just like you do. I looked at her angelic, hopeful face. How could I say no? So I helped her onto Bolt and taught her how to hold the reins and do a few commands. It went smoothly at first, but suddenly Mrs. Ellen came out of nowhere and shouted, What are you doing? Judy, come down right now. Startled, Judy misjudged her movements and tumbled off Bolt. As we both rushed over to check on her, Mrs. Allen pushed me aside, which caused me to fall onto my butt. Do you know how important legs are to a ballet dancer? Are you intent on ruining her future? Before I could reply, she shouted, What an incompetent kid! Get out of my sight! Ugh, it was just a few scratches and bruises. Why was she so serious about it? And incompetent? Huh, fine. I'd show her what an incompetent kid can do. From then on, I got my head in the game and continuously won several small and medium prizes. I sent most of my winnings to help out my grandparents and kept the rest to treat Judy and myself to something nice. One day after dinner, Dad called me into his office and told me that the two biggest races of the year, the Grand Shields and the Royal Silver Ford, were coming up in two weeks and he'd already signed me and Bolt up for them. But the two races were only one week apart. That would be too much for Bolt, cause the latest race seemed to wear him out. I mentioned this to Dad but he was adamant that Bolt would be able to manage it. I didn't want to let Dad down, but I didn't want to hurt Bolt either. I needed time to think about it. As I left the room, I gave a petrified jump. There, in front of me, was a stone-faced Mrs. Allen. She grabbed my arm and yanked me into another room. You can't compete in the races. These are different from your usual amateur events. You're not good enough, and you'll only embarrass our family. Were you eavesdropping on my conversation with Dad? Listen, you're not my mother, so you can't tell me what to do. I will surely join it. 
Then I stormed out of there. Early in the morning of the first race, I was going to the stables to check on Bolt when I caught one, two of Mrs. Allen's servants sneaking out of there. Hmm, what were they doing here? I went to investigate and... Huh? This is not Bolt! What has Mrs. Allen done to my horse? Right at that moment, Mr. Allen walked in with the vet. I told him what I'd just seen and he muttered out, That woman dares to get in my way, huh? I'll make sure she'll pay for it this time. Then he turned to me and said, Leave it to me, I'll find Bolt. Go get some rest and prepare yourself for the race. I'd never seen him this stern before, so I just nodded in concern. Despite all the drama, I still managed to bring home the Grand Shields Championship title. It's amazing, right? However, I couldn't fully enjoy the victory as one thing was still lingering on my mind. Mrs. Allen has been absent for the last four days. Could it be that Dad has done something to her? Hey, Judy, did Mrs. Allen say she was going somewhere? Dad told me that Mom's been so stressed lately, so he arranged for her to go to Aunt Anna's villa to rest. Oh, it seemed like what Dad said at that time was just an expression of anger. <sighs> at least I had one less thing to worry about. You see, my main concern at the moment is Bolt, as his health has clearly deteriorated since the previous race. The vet says he's doing fine, but through Bolt's heavy breathing, I know something isn't right. A week passed by and the day of the second tournament finally arrived. While the vet was checking on Bolt before the race, Dad suddenly pulled me outside. We must win today's match. I expect a lot from you. I had a bad feeling about this somehow, but I still nodded and assured him that I would do my best. The race was about to begin. Everything's in check. I'm ready for it. But wait, why does Judy look so flustered? Maddie, mom was not on a trip. The storage room. Dad locked her there because she found out what he was up to. He's doping Bolt. What is she talking about? Could it be that the vet who came in earlier was drugging Bolt then? But no way! If there's anyone wanting to harm me and Bolt, it's Mrs. Allen, not Dad! Listen, Mom only swapped Bolt the other time to protect you. Before I could shape what happened, I saw a burly man covering Judy's mouth and pulling her away. Then a voice whispered in my ear, Only one game left. Just keep your mouth shut and do it properly. If you lose, I can make things very uncomfortable for you and your grandparents. Got it? Now get on the horse! A chill ran down my spine. I felt like I was gonna vomit. How could the caring, kind man I called dad turn out to be such a fraud? The signal of the match rang out. Ugh, what should I do? I couldn't let that wicked man get what he wanted. So, I closed my eyes and stayed put. What do you think you're playing at? Run! Run now! Mr. Allen went crazy and rushed over to me. But right at that moment, the organizer appeared and asked me to take Bolt for a health check. They led Bolt away and brought me and Mr. Allen to the office, where I was shocked to see a frantic-faced Mrs. Allen cuddling Judy. It turns out that Judy had freed her mom from the room Mr. Allen had locked her in. Then she'd come straight here and handed the organizers incriminating paperwork of her husband's corrupt doings. Mr. Allen glared at me and shouted, I had to raise you without any benefits just because of her. Now it's your turn to pay me back. Then he immediately charged at me. But Mrs. Allen quickly covered for me and pushed him away. And one of the race organizers restrained him. Don't you dare harm my daughter. Huh? Daughter? Mrs. Allen looked at me with tear-soaked eyes. Sweetie, please give me a chance to explain. I fidgeted the coffee cup in my hand and stared at the ground while Mrs. Allen told me her side of the story. Turns out, she really is my biological mom! Could you believe that? After my dad passed away, in her vulnerable state, she fell for Mr. Allen's forced charm and fake words. But he soon showed his real face and heartlessly separated me and my mom after they married. That's why she could only secretly send money to our farm under Mr. Allen's name. Mom also recognized me from the beginning, but she didn't say anything as she knew that Mr. Allen adopted me just to get Bolt, a horse that could help him win some shady bettings. If I knew the truth and rebelled against him, he would harm me. I'm so sorry for all these years, especially these past few months. It has been extremely hard for me, having to treat my dear daughter so badly. 
but that was the only way to push you away from him, from this rotten house. I didn't want you to be in danger, just like how your real dad was when he worked for him. Please forgive me, Matilda. Tears kept rolling down my cheeks. Turned out, I always had a mother protecting me. Mom pulled me in for a tight hug. Mom! I hugged my mother tightly. I really love and miss you. Please forgive me. I looked up to her and smiled. Of course, yes. I'm more than happy to have you back in my life, Mom. And the best sister I could ever wish for, too. Hi, I'm Viola, and today is a big day. You see, it's my first time ever acting in this awesome short film, but I can't seem to focus at all. Why, you ask? Well, that's because I just discovered I'm not real. Or, to be exact, I only exist in my best friend's imagination. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Until yesterday, I always thought of myself as a completely normal human being. <sighs> Let me tell you how it all started. The first memory I have involves my best friend Harlow. I woke up feeling dazed and confused and saw this pretty girl smiling down at me. She told me that I'd be safe now and that her parents were going to look after me. Strangely, I couldn't remember anything before that day, and no one told me what had happened. I could only guess that I'd probably been abandoned or something, and that Harlow and her parents were my saviors. So... From then on, I lived with Harlow's family, who showed me kindness and love. When I first got out of the hospital, I couldn't do anything by myself. From personal things like brushing my teeth and washing my face, to chores such as doing laundry and dumping the trash. At the time, it was Harlow who guided and helped me, like a caring big sister. Then, when we entered middle school and the boys started flirting with me, Harlow was always by my side to protect me. She told me how they would never like a plain, boring girl like me, and that they were only doing this to get close to her, as she was very beautiful. If I had a decision to make, big or small, I always consulted Harlow first, as I knew she'd know best. But recently, I noticed that Harlow was acting short-tempered with me. When I got a better grade on my English essay than her, she told me I only got that mark as the teacher just felt sorry for me. Then she stormed off. Man... I didn't mean to upset her, and it was really unfair that the teacher didn't give her the grade she deserved, as she's far smarter than I am. Then last week, this boy called Hank in our school's film club held open auditions for his short film project. Harlow was desperate to be in it, so I decided to go along with her for support. I thought Harlow's audition was marvelous, but for some reason, she wasn't picked. I was about to leave too, but then Hank asked me if I wanted to audition. So I did, and you know what? I got the lead role. I was so surprised, and so was Harlow. She insisted that they were just tricking me, and I shouldn't take the part, as why would they choose a girl with ordinary looks like me to play the female lead? But still, I wanted to give it a try. Opportunities like this don't come twice, right? So I accepted the part. I know Harlow was worried that they were just teasing me, but Hank and his crew seemed nice, and maybe he finds my normal look suitable for the character right? The morning before the shooting day, I asked Harlow to lend me her pretty white dress to wear to the shoot. Harlow looked annoyed as she said, you spilled coffee on that dress last time you borrowed it, remember? You didn't even bother taking care of it and now the stain's still there. No way! I remember washing it before returning it to you. Well then you remember it wrong. It's my dress, so I'm hardly going to forget what you did to it, am I? Then she left in a temper. Strange. I remember using vinegar to clean the coffee stains, as it took me ages to scrub it off. But it is true that my memory isn't all that good. When I was a child, I once waited in the park in the rain for over an hour, just because I thought Harlow told me to meet her there on Saturday afternoon. I said Sunday afternoon. I have piano practice today, silly. So, maybe I misremembered again, and really didn't wash the dress for her? That day in math class, Harlow got caught texting, so the teacher confiscated her phone. At break time, she asked me to sneak into the school administrator's room to get her phone back. But of course I refused, as I was far too scared to do that kind of stuff. It's okay, no one can see you. Basically because 
You only exist in my imagination. What was she talking about? What did she mean by that? For the rest of the lesson, I kept thinking about Harlow's words. When the bell rang, seeing that I was still confused, Harlow pointed to a group of students standing nearby and told me that no matter what I did, they wouldn't see me. And that's true! When I waved my hands and talked to them, no one looked in my direction. I even snapped my fingers in front of them, but they didn't react at all. What is going on? Harlow told me that because she imagined me, she's in control of who sees me or not. Then she told me that if I still didn't believe it, I should go to the school administrator's room to get her phone. Then I'd see that she was telling the truth. The superintendent was standing right across the hallway, but Harlow assured me I'd be invisible to her. My heart was thudding like crazy, but I tried to shake back my nerves and continued to get her phone undetected. Whoa, the superintendent didn't see me at all! So what Harlow said was true? I only existed in her imagination? That means Harlow's really the one who decides what will happen to me. And who I'll meet? So basically the author of my life story. But does that also mean that I have no control over my own life? Well, if I even have a life. Then Harlow barged into my room and said, You've never wondered why you don't remember anything about your parents and about the time before you met me, have you? It was because I lost my memory after the accident. There was no accident, Viola. You have no previous memories because that was when I created you, as I wanted a friend to play with. I kept this truth a secret because I love you, and you always listen to me. But you've been so headstrong lately. After Harlow left, I found myself feeling so down. It turned out my whole life had never belonged to me. No wonder I was so plain and ordinary. All I am is a side character in Harlow's story. After a horrible sleepless night, I didn't even feel like going to the film set anymore. And it's already late anyway. I was laying in bed, spacing out, when Hank phoned me asking where I was. I only exist in Harlow's imagination, so there's no point filming. Huh? What nonsense are you going on about? Stop joking, Viola. We're short on time over here. Seeing that I didn't even bother to reply to him, but just let out a long sigh, he continued. All right, then. If that's the case, then you should at least make it count. Would you like to imagine yourself as just a boring nobody or a brilliant actress? I suppose Hank's words made sense, so I got myself back together and hurried to the film set. Even if I'm imaginary... I'll make this unreal life of mine unimaginably awesome. The filming was actually a lot of fun, and everyone complimented my acting. Hmm, they were probably just being nice, but it still felt good. Then Hank came over and congratulated me. Now that filming's over, you can be honest with me. I don't mind. I know you only cast me as the lead as you like Harlow. What do you mean? And the thing you said this morning as well about only existing in Harlow's imagination? I ended up blurting out everything to him, and you know what he did? He laughed. But when he saw that I was struggling to fight back my tears, he took my hand. Viola, listen to me. Harlow's tricking you. The only thing not real in all of this are her words, not you. No way. Harlow's my best friend. She would never do such a thing. If you only existed in Harlow's imagination, how come you still decided, on your own, to show up at film set this morning? How come you still meet other people without her being around? Like, right now? Harlow couldn't have written the script with all these little details, right? Come on, Vi. Think about it. But there was a time when Harlow made me invisible to everybody else. I snapped my fingers in front of them, and they didn't react at all. Hank asked me who these people were, and I told him. He said he'd make sure I saw sense. Then he left. This was so confusing. I cannot tell what is real and what's not anymore. The next day at school, when I was sorting my locker out, Hank dragged a reluctant-looking boy over to me. I recognized him. He was part of the group who didn't see me. Go on. Tell her everything. The boy told me how Harlow had bribed them to trick me. He also said that they distracted the superintendent so I could sneak into her office without being caught. 
What? I didn't understand why Harlow would do this to me. Hank went with me to confront her, and she faked a smile and said, Silly Viola, it was just a joke. So what about the fact that I can't remember anything about the time before I met you? You said there was no accident. It's also a lie, isn't it? I never said that. Probably you misremembered again like so many times before. I view you as a sister, Viola. I'd never lie to you. I didn't know what to believe anymore. I needed to be alone for a minute. This was all too much to process. So I ran to the nearby park to clear my mind. Suddenly, I felt something cold next to my cheek. It was Hank. He passed me some water and told me to drink it and calm down. Viola, I think Harlow's gaslighting you. She's basically emotionally abusing you to make you question your own sanity. I know you see her as a sister, but she's really toxic. Could it? Could it be possible that Harlow didn't have my best interests at heart? But what did she even get out of this, though? I'm not sure if this was because she wanted me to rely on her or she's jealous, but either way, knowing she could deceive me like that hurt like crazy. I didn't want to believe that that was what had been happening, but after all explanations, it's so clear now that Harlow was gaslighting me. And ever since then, I tried to avoid her as much as possible. But this was tricky, seeing as we were in the same class and lived together. I just wished I could grow up fast, so I could go to college and leave this house. At least there was good news. Hank's film in which I starred had gained attention on YouTube, and he was even selected to attend the short film festival with a view to supporting the city's young, talented filmmakers. Then, one day, I arrived home from school to see Harlow's parents drinking coffee with a strange woman. Huh? She sure looked a lot like me. Suddenly, she was running over to me and hugging me in her arms. Oh, darling, you have no idea how long I've been waiting for this moment. Following a whole lot of confusion, shocking revelations, and emotions, I finally found out the actual truth. It turned out that when I was seven years old, Mom took me on a yacht trip. Only, there was a terrible accident, so we took the lifeboat to shore. But then Mom fell out and ended up being rescued by another boat. We both suffered memory loss. In fact, Mom only remembered who I was when she saw the short film I starred in on YouTube. And then she tracked me down here. After that, I returned to live with my real mom. And guess what? I now realize just how awesome I am. I'm grateful to Harlow's parents for looking after me, but I still haven't forgiven Harlow yet. I'm trying to, as I know she's not all bad, but it's going to take some time. I also feel so blessed to have Hank by my side to help me discover my confidence and value my own worth. He even says I can be in his next film project, which I'm really excited about. It's good to know that I'm actually real, and I exist outside of Harlow's mind. The world is mine for the taking. And who knows, maybe one day I'll end up being a professional actress. Just one step into the hallway, and I could already hear all kinds of whispers going all around. Um, what happened? Did you forget, Sandra? It's Monday. <sighs> oh, not again. Who's the unlucky victim this week? Dorothy! It's Dorothy! <laughs> Look what embarrassing deed she's done! So, it was a photo of the resident mean girl, Dorothy, on a date with some old rich guy. Ben and I had zero interest in those kinds of things, but these kids on the other hand... Hey, there she is! This was the third Monday in a row that our school had turned into this gossiping chaos zone. Why, you ask? Three weeks ago, out of nowhere, a bunch of random QR codes appeared stuck to some of the lockers. Curious, we scanned them and got access to this mysterious blog by someone called Quiet Night. They said they wanted to expose the true face of this prestigious school. So, every Monday at 2 a.m., they would reveal someone's dirty secret. And the first secret belonged to the beloved basketball team captain, Lewis. Turns out he flunked the last match on purpose so the rival school that his secret girlfriend attended would win. 
At first, everyone doubted it, but then someone found the girlfriend's Twitter where she posted a celebration photo. So, there you go. Everything became clear as day. Lewis immediately lost his captain title and the entire school cancelled him. While everyone was still buzzing with that, already came the next Monday secret. It was Mr. Worthing, our popular math teacher. His classes were known for their top performances. But as it turned out, he had always accidentally leaked the questions to his students before every exam. The rumor reached the principal and he immediately had people look into it. Unfortunately, it was true, so Mr. Worthing was fired. And as you've heard, little Miss Dorothy was the third unfortunate victim. To be honest, she definitely hadn't been the nicest girl. She's a nightmare to all the new kids especially. So when her shameful secret was revealed, everyone seemed to be somewhat satisfied and talked about it non-stop. My BFF, Mary, was no exception, as Dorothy was a rival for her Queen Bee status. At lunchtime, we arrived at the cafeteria, but weirdly, nobody lined up to get lunch. They were all looking around at something. Turns out, Dorothy was here too. She's sitting alone at a table. Not wanting to miss an opportunity to taunt her longtime rival, Mary rushed straight over there. What's wrong? Your bald lover didn't take you out to lunch today? As soon as those words came out of Mary's mouth, everyone burst out laughing. Benjamin and I had to drag Mary out of there right away to avoid any calamities. What are you guys doing? I'm not done yet. This isn't cool. Let's just stay out of it. What? She deserves it. You know the clearest what a horrible person she is, Sandra. Or have you forgotten how she picked on you? Well, it's true. I was also one of Dorothy's victims when I just got here. Ben and Mary were the ones who stuck up for me. That's also how our precious friendship all started. Ever since then, we've been the iconic trio of the smartest kids at school. Pretty sweet, huh? However, the recent dramas have undeniably affected our studies. It's like students are coming here just to gossip and they keep chatting in class, making concentrating extra hard. Monday mornings became the biggest event in school. Everyone looked forward to it, guessing who's the next chosen one, as the embarrassing secrets continued seeping out. How Justin looks cool chewing his gum all the time, but he actually does this to mask his bad breath problem. Hardworking Julia bought her essays off the internet. The parking lot car spray painter turned out to be none other than Goody Two Shoes Brandon. It became apparent that any one of us could be next. So people started to panic, praying that their name wouldn't be mentioned. Every Monday morning, I arrived at school to see everyone looking like zombies, cause they'd all stayed up all night waiting for the quiet night's post. The mystery blogger had to be one of us to know all kinds of personal secrets like this, so everyone became extra cautious of each other. It's a mess and this has to stop. We needed to figure out who the quiet night was and stop this, but Mary wasn't convinced. How are we supposed to find them? There's zero clue. Stop wasting time. Let's just focus on studying, Sandra. There's no way they didn't leave any trace. We just have to stand up together. Nope. If you want to, then just do it alone. What's wrong with you? Weren't you usually the first one to avoid dramas like these? Because we could be next. So what? I'm not scared. I have nothing to hide. Then she left in a sulky manner. Mary might not care, but I did. I spent the night trying to piece the clues together when my phone had a pop-up. Ugh, was it 2am already? Who could it be this week? I pressed to see. It's Mary! Oh no, is it about that thing? Yep, that's it. The secret about Mary's background has been revealed. Her parents aren't successful business owners, and of course, Mary is not a rich mistress like how she always acted like either. I accidentally found out about this when I saw her bargaining about the rent in front of a small house in the suburbs. When I asked Mary why she had to lie like that, she just got all defensive. What do you know? If people knew the truth, they would laugh in my face. I, of course, didn't want to hurt Mary, so I always kept it a secret. <sighs> but now, everyone has found out in the worst way. The next day, Ben and I saw Mary walking toward us, looking exhausted, while everyone's eyes were on her. Yo, how'd you think she's able to afford those flashy outfits? Didn't that blogger say she always wears cheap secondhand clothes? Pathetic! Hearing those words, Ben and I gave those kids death stares and rushed to get Mary out of the crowd, but she suddenly snapped at me. Sandra, you're behind all of this, aren't you? Huh? What? Mary, what? What do you mean? Why would I do that? 
You're the only one who knew my secret. If it wasn't you, who else could it be? You are the quiet knight. What she said quickly caught everyone's attention, and I felt everyone's curious eyes fixed on us. Mary, that's not right. Remember, it's Sandra who called on everyone to find the culprit. That was clearly a distraction to fool everyone. Mary then continued explaining her reasonings for why she suspected me. The blogger only ever typed in lowercase just like I always did, and she also mentioned my habit of staying up late. To make it even worse, the next Monday, that blogger suddenly stopped posting, making everyone certain it was me. So I was instantly labeled a traitor to my friends and even a germ who raised hatred among students in this school. Everywhere I went, people badmouthed me, and no one except for Benjamin wanted to sit by me at lunch. I wasn't even allowed in the library anymore, as everyone would be talking about me which would cause disturbance. Worst of all, the teachers hated me too. One time in math class, I volunteered to solve a difficult equation, but all I got back from the teacher was, Sandra, if only you just used your intelligence for studying, not for messing up other people's lives. Then everyone heartlessly laughed at my face. The tension was draining me, so I went out to take a breather. After recess, I got back to the classroom to find a box in my desk drawer. Oh no, wasn't it the love letters I'd written for Lewis? I mean, yes, I used to have a crush on the basketball captain, but it was a long time ago, and I never sent the letters. How come they are all here? I sure had hidden them in the corner of my locker. Is it the creepy quiet night messing with me? Ugh, that's enough. I gotta unmask this jerk ASAP. Hmm, who could it be? Who had the ability to spy on people undetected? I was trying to figure this out when a smug-looking Dorothy appeared. Jeez, look at her. Can't believe she's the coward who destroys what she couldn't have. Too bad for Lewis that he ended up involved in this. Oh, such a pathetic little girl. Doesn't even have the guts to send any of the letters. <laughs> Oh. My. God. Did they just say letters? What letters? What on earth are you talking about? There's no mistaking your handwriting. She showed me bunches of photos of my letters. Oh no. Did she take revenge on me because she thought I was the snitch of her dating news? Not leaving me a chance to explain, they just laughed and continued mocking me. I couldn't face going to school and being tormented for something I didn't even do. So I faked being sick to stay home for a few days. But it's been a week and I still didn't feel better. Suddenly, there was a strange sound by the window. Turns out, it was Benjamin. Sandra, please stop hiding away. You can't let them beat you. You're better than this. What else can I do? Everyone's convinced it was me. Follow me. I know someone who can help. Now, I was sitting in a cafe with Benjamin and Max, an IT genius in our school. Benjamin insisted this guy could help identify the anonymous blogger. After just a few minutes of checking the IP, Max has been able to track it down. But, huh? It led to Mary's place? Huh? No way. This makes no sense. I gotta talk to Mary. Calm down. Don't say a word about this to anyone for now. Just let me take care of it. I had no clue what Benjamin was planning. He said he would help me clear up the case, but nothing happened for days. Until now, he insisted I come to watch this basketball game. What's the point? It just gave others a chance to mock me further. While immersed in my thoughts, suddenly, I heard someone's voice on the loudspeaker. It was Benjamin! Hi everyone, I'm sure you guys are tired of the Quiet Nights blog by now, right? Yeah, at first, I just wanted to entertain you all a bit after boring hours of studying. But I guess it's no longer fun, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry then. I'll stop now. Thanks for tuning in. What on earth is he doing? Now, the entire sports hall was buzzing. Is it really you? Benjamin was about to reply when Mary jumped out. No, it can't be you. Stop wasting time protecting Sandra. How could you possibly know where her love letters were kept? Or about Dorothy's secret? So, you tell me. Who knew those things then? Mary looked taken aback and confused. Then Dorothy appeared. It's her. It's her who gave me Sandra's locker key. Wh what So it really was Mary. I was still hoping that Ben's friend made a mistake somewhere instead, but... Why, Mary? I don't understand. Of course you don't. You're not in my shoes to judge. Turns out at first, Mary created the blog for the sole purpose of getting revenge on Lewis for being a cheater. He always told Mary that he wanted to date in secret to avoid peering eyes, but it was just an excuse so he could sneak around with other girls. 
Which is why this was news to both Ben and me. How about the math teacher? What has he ever done to you? He had no work ethic, so he deserved it. I always studied really hard, but he said that girls like me only ever cared about our appearance. He still thought my good grades were from copying these two. And you, Dorothy? It serves you right for the arrogant habit of bossing newbies around. Then she blatantly left the crowd as if she had nothing to do with the school drama all this time. I tried to chase after her, but I was stuck amid this angry crowd. There's still something she hasn't explained yet. The following days, Mary still went to school, but all of the other students isolated her. Benjamin and I tried to approach her, but she went out of her way to avoid us. So, after school, we decided to follow her. We saw her going to the cafeteria, but not to buy things, but to help the lunch lady clean up. Mary, stop being like this. You've still got a friend in me, but don't you think I deserve an explanation to? She then finally sat down and talked to us. Mary would have stopped after exposing the three people she hated, but when she saw everyone eagerly waiting for the news every Monday, she found it interesting and continued to bring up other embarrassing things. But then, when things started getting serious, she panicked and looked for someone to blame, and that person was me! Because I was the one who first came up with the idea of tracking down this anonymous blogger. Furthermore, she was angry with me for finding out her secret. Envious because I got better grades than her, and jealous because I was closer to Ben than she was. Mary admitted she felt outshined and left out. So, you decided to expose your own secret you kept for so long just to frame me? Do you hate me that much? No, no, Sandra, it's not like that. I'm really sorry. As for that secret, I had tried to act like a hot girl from a rich family just to be worthy of that jerk, Louis. But since I know he's a bad guy, there's no point of keeping that secret anyway. Ben and I leaned over and hugged her, saying it was all okay. As long as we are honest from now on, we'd be able to sort everything out. After that, we helped Mary clean up the messy tables in the cafeteria. And can you believe it? The lunch lady is actually Mary's mother. She was the one who unintentionally told Mary all the petty secrets that everyone gossiped about while getting lunch. Mary has always hidden the fact her mom's the lunch lady, but after being exposed and boycotted, she gave up and decided not to try hard for the popular girl title anymore, but just to be herself. I knew that this was hard for Mary, but deep down, she has a good heart, else she wouldn't have befriended me when I first started at this school. Living up to the expectations of being the school's it girl must have been exhausting. It's been a semester full of drama, hasn't it? Phew, lucky it's almost over. Now we're in a hurry to revise all lessons together to prepare finals week. We still compete with each other a lot, but this time it's fair and square. The three of us already decided that whoever gets the lowest score will have to take the other two out for dinner. Free food, here I come, as I definitely am not going to lose. <laughs> I was completely immersed in this beautiful harmony that me and my dad were playing until... What on earth are you two doing? Startled. I turned around to see Siren standing there with fiery eyes. Oh, God. I came back to my senses at once and realized that next to me, the man I was jamming with was not my dad, but Isaac, her boyfriend. Oh, no. What had I done? I quickly wiped my tears away and was about to leave. But Isaac took my hand and gave me this confused look. Being back here in this house was difficult enough without getting involved in this love triangle. So I tried to pull my hand free and ran out of there. Yes, it's me again, Hazel. In the last part of my story, my friends embroiled me into helping their idol Isaac and his actress girlfriend Siren escape from the public eye for a bit. Now I'm stuck in my family's old home and having to confront my past. All these memories flooded my mind. Some good, some bad. And before I knew it, I was mixing the past with reality. And that's how I accidentally played the piano with Isaac and made Siren green with envy. At that moment, Siren swung open the door and charged toward me. Hey, don't let me catch you flirting with my BF again! Excuse me? What did you say? He's not even my type. Besides, having you as a love rival sounds like way more hassle than it's worth. She gave me this lingering scowl. Clearly she was furious with me. 
but she must have decided there was nothing else she could say on this matter. However, this didn't stop her from being the most demanding, frustrating diva on the planet. She stuck her nose up at the food and drinks we served her, and insisted that she couldn't possibly consume anything that wasn't organic. She threw the clothes that we lent her down the stairs cause, quote, those vulgar outfits didn't suit her. Then she asked Ivy to go get her designer ones. Once, Zoe even had to drive over an hour to the mall just for a few scented candles. Why, you ask? Well, Siren accused me of exuding this bad energy that had been affecting her sleep and her well-being, so she needed to cleanse the aura around here. Poof, this was nonsense. Once her head touched the pillow, she slept like a log. It seems that living in the same house as their idol and his girlfriend wasn't exactly all it's cracked up to be. Isn't that right, Ivy and Zoe? However, contrary to Siren the Nightmare, Isaac surprised me quite a lot by actually being a great help around the house. He was an excellent cook and a dab hand at fixing things. Okay, I admit that I used to think he was just one of those useless celebs out there, but it seems he had no problem with pulling his weight. Anyway, this manner of his did somewhat make up for the obnoxious attitude of his girlfriend, which made this whole thing a bit more bearable. Until this one time, we were rowing on the river near the mansion. Well, I was rowing to be exact, just me, as what could we expect from our two superstars? But it's pretty out here, isn't it? It was Siren's bright idea, as she wanted some new Insta photos. You're probably wondering where Zoe and Ivy are? Yep, they're scouring the shops a few towns over for ethical foie gras. Look at her, saying she's feeling sick she couldn't row. But apparently she was well enough to smile for the camera and strike dozens of different poses. Suddenly, Siren decided to stand up to get better lighting, which made the whole boat shake. I shouted at her to sit down, but then before I properly knew what was going on, the boat was turning sideways and I tumbled into the water. I flailed my arms and legs out and tried my best to raise my head above the water, but it was no use. I couldn't stop myself from sinking beneath it. I honestly believed this was it. The world started to darken around me, when suddenly, an arm grabbed me and pulled me ashore. Hazel, can you hear me? I slowly opened my eyes and saw Isaac's worried face peering down at me. Hazel, thank goodness. He gently helped me sit up, then asked me if I was alright. For a few fleeting moments, the warmth from his body made me flush. Clearly, nearly drowning had made me delirious. I mean, I couldn't have feelings for him. Could I? Before I could ponder on this thought anymore, a drenched siren dripped her way over to us. Isaac, why did you rescue her instead of me? Siren, this is not the time for being dramatic. I was hardly going to come to you, an expert swimmer, over Hazel who was actually drowning. Hearing Isaac say that, she rolled her eyes, then stormed off, leaving a wet footprint trail in her wake. The last thing we needed in the house was more tension, so I immediately turned to him and said I was fine, and he should go and sort things out with his girlfriend. Listen, Hazel, Siren's not my girlfriend. I don't like her in that way, but as for you and me, we clearly have a connection. I stared at him in complete open-mouthed shock. Did he really just say that? Or perhaps I had a concussion and was imagining things? Siren's like my little sister. I'll explain this later, but first you need to rest. Then he wrapped his arms around me and guided me back to the house. I spent the rest of that day in bed feeling feverish. Then at dawn the next morning, I awoke to a commotion coming from downstairs. Guys? <sighs> What's all the noise about? It's Isaac and Siren! They've gone! And they've taken the car! What? That was our only mode of transport out of here! How could they be so selfish to just abandon us here like this? We tried contacting Isaac countless times, but no answer. Great, here we are now in this remote area where it would take hours to even find a passerby to hitchhike, not to mention how risky it'd be. Everything was a mess. We were panicking when suddenly the door burst open and walked in a smiling, arm-linked Isaac and Siren. Where have you been? You can't just leave like that without telling us. Oh, Ivy lent us the car. Didn't she say anything? 
Both Zoe and I turned our gazes on Ivy. She stammered. But, but I think you guys just went out for a while, not disappeared all night unreachable. Relax, all this tension will give you wrinkles. Then Siren smirked at me as she flicked back her hair and then continued. We went to a drive-in cinema and it was so romantic. We didn't want the evening to end, so we strolled around town until the early hours. What did she mean by that? So much for him seeing her as a sister. I felt like such a fool for believing his lies. We altered our entire plans to help you both hide from society, and this is how you thank us? By pulling a stunt like this? No more. Get out of here! Right now! Before anyone could say anything, my phone buzzed. It was my friend Erica. She asked me if the stories about me being in love with Isaac were true. Huh? What was she on about? In my panic, I ended the call and went online to check it out. Turns out on the Instagram account of the store where I customized our matching hoodies, the shop owner had posted a photo of me wearing it. Naturally, it didn't take the fan maniacs long to do their research and find out all about me. But worse still, another current trending post was one from Isaac's management company, confirming that we were officially dating. What kind of nonsense is this? I immediately told Isaac to call his company and put it on speaker. Isaac, we hit a jackpot! You probably know the iconic pianist and composer Edward Moretz, right? Hazel Moretz is his daughter! You... you mean... Everyone gasped at me in shock. Maybe it's time for me to reveal the secrets of my past, the truth that's been hidden for so long. Yes, Edward Moretz is my father, but I made a promise to myself ten years ago that I would never speak to him again. Isaac's manager continued to brazenly talk about how the scandal with me would benefit Isaac's career, so there was no need to hide it. At that moment, Siren shouted, What on earth are you saying? Hey, are you with Siren again? I already told you not to mess with that girl unless you want to get yourself in trouble. Shut up! Siren furiously grabbed Isaac's phone and ended the call. Isaac, tell everyone that the one you love is me! Not her! Siren, we were never in love. You're going too far. What? You guys aren't dating? So we misunderstood it all from the beginning? I knew right away there was something wrong. Yet you pretended to be his real girlfriend and treated us like your minions. Siren stood there with a red face, fists clenched. I gave you my heart, but all you do is hurt me. This time you've made a big mistake, Isaac. Just wait and see! Siren left for her room, but this time neither of us stopped her or comforted her. The next morning, we found out that Siren was gone. None of us knew where she was. We all just hoped that she wasn't so fueled with anger that she'd cause us even more problems. We quickly packed our things into the car, preparing to return to our normal life. When out of nowhere, a bunch of reporters and journalists appeared and surrounded us. Isaac, Miss Sirenwild has accused Ms. Moretz of wrecking your relationship. Is this true? Does that mean you ran away from all the shows to go on a secret day with Ms. Moretz? Ms. Moretz, your father was known for breaking not only yours, but also another family apart. All for his own selfish needs. Are you following in his footsteps? Scary flashlights were everywhere. Suddenly I found myself transported back to that terrible day ten years ago when Dad's affair went public and the reporters hounded us in this exact same spot. Those heartless flashlights are just as intense now as they were back then. A memory of my mom's distraught face popped into my mind. Puffy eyes, tear-stained cheeks, a fearful look. Yet the reporters were relentless vultures, firing questions at her regardless of her vulnerable state. That's the day I made a promise to myself that not only would I never pursue music, but I'd also never forgive my father. Amid the panic, an arm pulled me into the car, and we drove away from the crowd. It was Isaac. He put on some piano music to help calm me down, and he continued driving, eventually stopping at a small grocery store. Hazel, please drink this. Sorry for dragging you into all this. The thing is, I've been unhappy with my management company for a while now. They won't let me make the music I want to but I didn't expect them to go as low as forcing me into their web of lies just for fame. I know how you feel. I used to long to become a pianist like my dad, 
but then he crushed my dreams. To further his career, he cheated on my mom with another married woman and left our family behind. I grew to hate the complex world of artists. I vowed to never become one of them. And then I gradually began to despise the sound of the piano, too. I'm sorry to hear that story. But art isn't to blame. It reflects lies genuinely, doesn't it? I heard your piano melodies and you are truly gifted. Be honest with your feelings and don't let anyone else interfere with them. Trying to deny your own passion and emotions will only make you miserable. Isaac's right. I'd let my dad's mistakes alter the pathway to my dreams. Not making music made me miserable. I felt like there was a part of me missing. One that nothing else could fill. Why should I be the one to suffer like this? When it hadn't even been me that done anything wrong. Look at me now. Can you believe it? I've rekindled my passion for piano, and now I'm happier than ever. After all that runway pop star drama, Isaac left his management company and collaborated with me to make music for true art. This is our latest charity event. It's pretty neat, huh? That's all thanks to Zoe and Ivy. They work for us now. They're in charge of arranging our busy schedules and organizing our events. The four of us make the best team. I guess you're wondering what happened to Siren? Last I heard, she set her sights on her latest movie co-star. Hmm. Wish her good luck is all I can say. As for Isaac and me, well, since the media claimed that we were a couple, we might as well have turned that fake news into reality. It was a normal, boring day in the grocery store. I was stacking milk in the fridge when Camilla, my co-worker, came and said, Layla, you have to help me. I have this date tomorrow night, but I'm busy. Could you please go instead? Wait, what? I don't even know your date. Besides, I have a boyfriend. Lincoln, remember? Then she began explaining to me about this dating service, and she assured me it was 100% legit. It was mainly lonely men who just wanted some company. All I had to do was talk to them, and of course, there was a strict no-hugging or kissing policy. At the end of the date, they'd pay me. No thanks. No way I was going to do that. After my shift, I went home to see my landlady lingering in my doorway. She started yelling at me that I still owed her five months' worth of rent, and if I didn't pay it by the end of the week, she'd kick me out. I begged her to give me more time, but it was pointless. My god, what to do? Where could I get that much money on such short notice? Oh, wait a minute. What about Camilla's dating service? It looks like I was out of choices, so I called her and agreed to go on the date. So here I am, on my weird date night. I put the most basic dress I could find on. Oh boy, I sure felt nervous. I have no idea what to say and how to act. Oh, that must be him. My God, Camilla, how could she forget to mention that the guy was in his 50s? People would think he's my sugar daddy. Ugh. Keep it together, Layla. I couldn't back out now, as my home depended on it. So, I slowly approached the man. At first, he looked surprised. That figures, I mean, he was expecting Camilla. I explained the situation to him, and he wasn't mad or anything. He just smiled at me, and we started chatting. He's called Mr. Hall. He lost his wife two years ago. And ever since then, he's been feeling lonely and needed someone to talk to. So that's why he started using this service. Hmm. He was actually pretty easy to talk to. So the night quickly went by without any problem. After the date, he handed me an envelope and told me how grateful he was to me for listening to his burdens. I was itching to go home and open the envelope. But then he started going on about his heartbroken son. Suddenly, he was asking me if I'd talk to him. Obviously, I refused as this was a one-time thing to help out Camilla. Besides, I have a boyfriend. Speaking of which, he'll be so furious if he ever finds out about this. The next day, I paid the landlady two months' rent and assured her I'd have the rest with her soon. But to my shock, she just scowled at me and forced me to pay all at once. Well, guess where I am now. In a cafe, waiting for Mr. Hall and his son. Ugh. Oh, there he is. And that must be his son. Geez, could he look any more annoyed? Hi, I'm Layla. Nice to meet you. Save it. I'm only here because he forced me to. So just let's get it over with. Layla, 
Thank you for coming. This is my son, Leon. Please don't mind his attitude. Then Mr. Hall left us alone. Man, Leon was hard work. Any questions I asked him, he just shrugged or snorted. Then, when he finally spoke, he sarcastically said, So, Layla, I hope the money's worth it. What? How rude! Then he continued, You must be desperate. Don't you feel ashamed of yourself? Ah, he was the rudest person I'd ever met. But, yes, I was desperately in need of money. So I took a deep breath and started telling him about myself. When time ran out, I said goodbye to him and left. What an unpleasant experience, but at least that was the end of it, right? Wrong. As Mr. Hall asked me to meet him several more times. Who was I to argue? I mean, I needed the money. But Leon was getting on my nerves. As all he did was slouch in his seat, slurp his drink, and say nothing. So, it was down to me to do all of the talking. I began telling him all sorts of things about my past, my family, and friends, and even about my future plans. And Leon just sat there listening to everything, supposedly. Luckily, it finally ended, and Mr. Hall paid me so I never had to meet Leon again. Because the last few weeks had been taken up with dating Mr. Hall and his son, I hadn't seen much of Lincoln. So, at the weekend, I invited him over to mine and cooked for him. We were sitting on the couch, hugging while watching a movie, when Lincoln said, in a serious tone, Layla, we need to talk. But then suddenly my phone rang. It was Mr. Hall. I quickly rushed to the balcony to pick up. He wanted me to be Leon's plus one at his eldest son's wedding, and he was willing to pay double? Ugh, that sounded awful, but besides rent, I also had to pay for college fees and food, and my measly income from the grocery store didn't come close to covering it at all, so I reluctantly agreed. When I returned inside, I asked Lincoln what he wanted to tell me. He hesitantly said that, He had to go on a business trip for two weeks? Well, maybe it was for the best so I could go with Leon without worrying about my boyfriend. Ugh, I felt so guilty. I swear this would be the last time I was going to do this. Leon arrived to pick me up, and as soon as he saw my dress, he insisted I couldn't wear such an ugly thing. Ugh, he was so rude. I told him I had nothing else suitable, so he drove me to a dress boutique, then told the staff to bring the most beautiful dress in store to try on. Oh my... It was stunning. I was overwhelmed when I saw myself in the mirror. Well, I definitely looked amazing in it. And Leon must be thinking that too, because he couldn't take my eyes off me. Ugh, it's such a shame. I can't afford it. But then before I could stop him, he went ahead and paid for it. Ugh, oh, how frustrating. I was sitting in the church waiting for the wedding to start while Leon flirted with some girls. And God, Lincoln wasn't like that jerk. Then everyone went to their seats and the wedding began. The groom walked to the altar in this luxury-fitted suit. Man, it must be so nice to be rich. But isn't that... Is that Lincoln? My Lincoln? Our eyes met, and he looked as shocked as I did. But instead of running to me and explaining everything, he just ignored me and continued with the wedding. I had to watch them saying their vows, exchanging rings, and kissing. I thought I was going to faint any minute now. Then at the wedding reception, Leon dragged me over to Lincoln and introduced me as his girlfriend. Awkward overload. And soon, some pretty girl distracted Leon again, so he chased after her. Then Lincoln immediately pulled me over to the stairwell. Why are you here with my brother? Were you cheating on me this whole time? Seriously? What about you? I'm not the one who just got married. Let me explain. It's not what it looks like. Right at that moment, Leon appeared and asked why we were here talking. I muttered out some story about trying to find the bathroom. Then I told Leon I had a headache and asked him to take me home. This was so confusing. How could my perfect boyfriend now be married to someone else? He kept on texting me saying he wanted to meet up and talk. I guess I needed to at least hear him out. The next day I met him at the museum, where we had our first date. So, his wife, Sandra is a daughter of an affluential businessman who owns one of the biggest corporations in town. Lincoln's family company is in big debt, so his dad forced him to marry Sandra in order to save the company. Believe me when I say I don't have any feelings for Sandra. It's just business. I only love you. Please don't leave me. I promise as soon as the company is back on track, I'll file for divorce. Yeah, I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I still love him too. Besides... If the marriage is only temporary so he can save this family business, 
and that's understandable, right? He kissed me goodbye and left. But after that, Lincoln changed. Every time I texted and called him, he told me he was busy and would call me back. But he never did. I guess married life was preoccupying him. As if this wasn't frustrating enough, I had to put up with Leon. He kept on appearing at my place and bothering me. One time he showed up drunk, complaining about his ex-girlfriend, who'd just married someone else. Yeah, obviously it's far from worse than my current boyfriend just getting married. I tried to kick him out, but he'd already fallen asleep on my couch. The next morning I went to the kitchen to see Leon holding a picture of me and Lincoln and asking why we were on it. So I just shrugged and explained that we were a couple. Leon started laughing and calling me a fool. We argued back and forth, and in the end, I made him leave. I don't care what everyone thinks. I believe Lincoln. Then a few days later, I was walking out of college when I saw Mr. Hall waiting for me. He gave a slight sigh, then said, I will make this short. Stay away from Lincoln. He's married now. Layla, I'm fond of you, but if you try messing with Lincoln's marriage, I won't hesitate in making things complicated for you. Oh my god! I can't believe Leon snitched on me. Ugh, what a giant baby. In anger, I took out my phone and gave him a piece of my mind. Oh my god. I can't believe you told your dad about me and Lincoln. You're such a jerk. Just leave us alone and mind your own business. If you trust Lincoln, then that's on you. But he's not as innocent as he makes out. He and dad would do everything for the company. What did that mean? I hung up without letting him say another word. This jerk didn't even try to cover up his action. <laughs> I couldn't just let them do this. I needed to fight for us. So the next day, I walked straight into Mr. Hall's office, even though his secretary tried to stop me. I told him right to his face that I would never give up on Lincoln despite his threats. And you know what? Forcing your son to get married just to save the company makes you a coward. Mr. Hall burst out laughing. Well, what came next was far from funny. Turns out it was Lincoln's idea to marry Sandra. Leon was right. Both of them would do everything for the company. Another thing Leon didn't tell Mr. Hall about Lincoln and me. He saw us talking at the wedding. So we hired someone to investigate us. I was totally wrong about Leon. Right at that moment, Lincoln walked in and stopped dead on seeing me. Layla, what are you doing here? You liar. I can't believe I trusted you. Please hear me out. I took the iced coffee from Mr. Hall's desk and splashed it in Lincoln's lying face. We're done. Overcome with emotions and feeling like a massive fool, I rushed to the nearest bar to drown my sorrows. I was about to down my fourth shop when a hand stopped me. <sighs> Can Lincoln just leave me alone? But when I looked up, it was Leon. Why are you so good to me? I mean, I blamed you for telling your dad. You should hate me. <laughs> because I like you. I felt like the room was spinning upon hearing his words. Then everything slowly came to light. Leon was devastated when his girlfriend broke up with him. But then he found out she did it to be with his brother. Yes, you heard me right. His ex was none other than Sandra. At first, Mr. Hall forced Leon to marry Sandra for the sake of the company. Even though Leon was crazy about her, he didn't want to marry her under those stipulations. Lincoln overheard their conversation. So to gain his father's trust, he charmed Sandra away from Leon. Oh my god, this family was crazy. I didn't want anything to do with any of them ever again. So I just rejected Leon's feelings, ran straight out of the bar, and cut off totally with all of them. So what now? Well, I graduated last month. So after that, I decided I needed a fresh start in a shiny new city. So far, so good. I have a new job, which I adore. And it's so good knowing I'm not going to run into that jerk Lincoln or his dad. Hmm, I know what you're wondering. What about Leon? Well, one day, I was walking out of my apartment when I saw a familiar face. Yes, it was him. Turns out when Leon heard that I was moving to another city, he moved too. I thought it was sweet that he was willing to leave his family, friends, and job behind just to be with me. Maybe it's time to gradually open up to him, don't you think? Well, time will tell. Too bad my story has to end here. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Evie from Georgia. So, I look like a regular teenage girl, right? <laughs> Just you wait till you see what I can do. Kids these days are so rude and unruly. I blame the parents. There's just no discipline anymore. See? 
they don't even respect their principal. But no big deal. I know just how to handle them. There we go. Just a few words and the class immediately went silent. What is this, Mrs. Gardner? That trip was all we've been looking forward to for months. Thanks to everyone's disruptive behavior. Well, to be exact, thanks to the actions of you, 25 out of 300 students, no one has anything to look forward to this year. Okay, then go on, ma'am. Punish us. But why drag the whole year group into this? Other classes will definitely not leave us alone after this. Nobody likes being punished. That's why it works. Now, let's see what your peers make of this, shall we? The whole class was buzzing with, So unfair! Abuse of power! Wicked witch! Oh my! These kids, always full of energy. Go back to your seats and write an apology letter to Miss Helen, along with a promise to never misbehave again, or else. All of them reluctantly sat down. And there we have it. Oh my god. Who are you? I... I... Um... It's just that these unruly students need to learn a lesson for getting Mrs. Helen so exhausted that she ended up in the hospital. And so you just decided to mimic me. Well then, please inform your mum. We will have a talk about this. Here, tomorrow morning. I glumly walked home as slowly as possible. As soon as I walked through the door, Mum was glaring at me. Yep, my mom is Miss Helen, the kindest homeroom teacher ever. However, the kids in her class made her life a misery, which led Mum to get high blood pressure and end up in the hospital. I just wanted to help her, but instead, I just managed to make things worse. <sighs> Hi, Mum. I'm sorry, but I don't regret what I did. Mom started lecturing me about how it was bad enough that Dad had left and her students were rebellious without me acting like a crazy person. Crazy person? She means the times when I copy the people I want to be? But that's my hobby. I inherited that passion from my father, a famous special effect makeup artist. The feeling whenever I successfully transform into someone else is awesome. And it also helps me feel connected to my dad even though I haven't seen him in a long time. It all started when I was 13, and Dad helped me dress up as my fave idol for the school festival. Dad taught me how to analyze the character and practice the disguise. Bold eyeliner, smoky eyes, contouring, plus the bodycon outfits. I looked like a real CL from 2NE1. My friends loved my new look. So over the next few years, I masqueraded into many different people, including Lady Gaga, Avril Lavigne, Miley Cyrus, and Sia. The feeling that my makeup talent was that admired and anticipated was just... really addictive. Hey, is it Billie Eilish this time? Why not Taylor Swift? I love her so much. I've always done whatever I want, and always been exactly who I am. Wow, you got that spot on. Are you a shapeshifter or something? Needless to say, once I imitated someone... I made sure I got their gestures and mannerisms just right. My talent didn't stop at awesome makeup. I was trying to collect things from my locker when a stampede of students raced past me and almost knocked me off my feet. Huh? Who was that strange and rather handsome guy they were chasing? Look at him swaggering. Does he think he's Donald Trump or something? That's Xander. He just transferred here. Keep your voice down, by the way. You don't want to annoy his fan base. Poof, I'm not afraid of those way too girly girls who go crazy for boys. Huh, <laughs> no one scares you, do they, Evie? Now let's go have some granola. Leo may like boring granola, but no thanks. I'm having a hamburger and fried chicken. Billie Eilish is not the type to turn down delicious food for health freak nonsense. Oh, there's that obnoxious Xander again. But this time he's all over Kayla the snooty hot girl from my class. A boy approached me asking to take a selfie with me, then suddenly I heard a scream. What do you think you're doing? I turned to see what was going on, and saw Kayla going ballistic at some poor girl who'd accidentally tripped over and fallen into Xander's lap. 
What on earth do you think you're doing? Take a look at yourself before trying to attract my man. Ugly doofus. How snobby. Did she think her beauty was that splendid to help her keep her man? But not with that empty head, girl. After a few days of research, I showed up at school looking just like Kayla. I'd perfected everything from her blonde hair, makeup, clothes, walk, and voice. Honestly, this time I was quite nervous. Dressing up as someone I actually knew was always extra scary, especially when her friends were walking over. Wow, that dress is so chic. You really are the fashionista of our school, Kay. Come on, Xander's waiting for us on the sports field. Please, do you think I really want you around? I'm just taking advantage of you. And you, you keep following me around like a pet. It's so tragic. Are you crazy? I know you like Xander too. I see the gooey looks you give him. When I'm done with him, I'll consider giving him to you. I walked away leaving the girls freaking out. But I didn't say anything different from what Kayla thought though, right? If only she would be so frank with her friends. Now let's get to the main target. Thinking about him gave me goosebumps. I'm busy, bae. Go hang with your friends for now. He was playing Call of Duty on his phone. I was here to break up with him, but hang on a minute. This guy had skill. I want to have a go. Since when did you know how to play this game? Hmm. He looked kind of touched that I was showing an interest. Okay, I'll wait until after this, and then we will split up. I looked for Leo, but he didn't even recognize me. Poor him. He'd been searching for Billie Eilish since morning. While Leo was complaining, he helped me quickly remove my makeup so I could go back to looking like me before anyone guessed what I'd just done. From that day onwards, Kayla's friends cut her off so she could only cling to Xander. And from my point of view, he seemed to be tired of this clingy girl. Now even her look made him sick, huh? The time has come. I put makeup on his Kayla again and found him. I want this bag. Don't try to trick me with a fake one. Okay, as you wish. I want you to give up COD. That way you can only stay by my side. Okay, I'll follow you all day. I want to throw a party and invite the whole school. Your task is to get everyone to gather around me like they used to. If you can't do that, we'll break up. Deal. But I see everyone likes you. Right, Evie? Holy mother! Did he recognize me already? But since when? I have to acknowledge your talent. If only you hadn't shown me your charm, you wouldn't have been exposed. Well, Kayla looks like a picture, but a dull one compared to you. You have such a good eye. However, you're no different from her. Miss Helen is your mom, right? Don't be surprised. I'm a better observer than you think. Just like you. I know that Kayla was the instigator of the disturbance in the class that sent your mom to the hospital. I already apologized to your mom for Kayla's behavior. And if you want to know why I did that, it's because... I have a big crush on you. Oh my god. I didn't expect things to turn out this way. But, okay. Taking it as a slap in the face for Kayla on behalf of my mom, I still agreed to date him. The next day, I showed up again at school as Ariana Grande, simply because I wanted to. But this time, I also played another role, Xander's girlfriend. As usual, every time I dressed up as a new character, all eyes were on me. But this time, it was more epic when I walked side by side with the hottest guy in school. When Leo saw that I was with Xander, he rolled his eyes at me, then walked off. Then Kayla walked around the corner, saw us together, and started shouting at me. How dare you steal my man? You're just some pathetic wannabe. Xander took my arm and yelled at her. Evie's creative, sweet, and really funny. I want to be with her. I like her. Kayla's face dropped. Then she pointed her finger in front of him. How could you do this to me? I will get you back for this. Then she huffed off. Xander looked at me and asked if I was okay. Then he invited everyone to a party at his house that night to celebrate the fact that I was now his girlfriend. 
Was he serious? But whatever. It would be rude to say no, right? So that evening, I went to his party. To my surprise, Kayla was already there. So I flirted with Xander to annoy her further. Then suddenly, Xander leaned in close to my face, which made my whole body feel hot. What was happening? He... he was going to kiss me? But then he whispered in my ear, You haven't told me how you feel about me yet. <laughs> you were looking forward to this answer, weren't you? I... but before I could reply, Leo appeared out of nowhere, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. Ugh! What on earth are you doing? I'm the one who should be asking you that question. What on earth were you going to say? That I have feelings for you too? This whole thing is a setup between Xander and Kayla to humiliate you. Lucky for you, I arrived just in time to overhear Kayla talking to her friends about this dirty plan. Are you done talking? Do you really think I'd fall into their trap that easily? I already know their dirty tricks, and I was about to tell everyone what jerks they are. But then you showed up and ruined my plan. I don't care how clever and perfect your plan is. How long are you going to continue this tiring game of dispute? They think just because they're both hot that they can treat everyone else like they're puppets. Well, I've had enough. Evie, you're better than this. I don't like this revenge-seeking version of you. Can you please just stop it and go back to normal? Leo walked away in a huff and left me out here alone in the street. I stormed home and took off my makeup. Why was Leo so mad at me? I did nothing wrong. The gentle Leo I knew never had gotten mad or even went against my will, and was always the most enthusiastic supporter every time I imitated someone. What had gotten into him? I called him continuously, but Leo turned off the phone. Ugh. I felt so alone, it was horrible. Then I heard a knock on my door. Mom peered her head around it. Seeing me upset, she came over and cuddled me. It felt good having her comfort me, so I ended up blurting out everything to her. Hmm. It sounds like Leo was just worried about you. But as for Xander and Kayla... They're not worth your time or effort. Don't become someone you're not just to get revenge on people who don't deserve you. But... Suddenly, I heard rustling outside of my bedroom window. Then Leo poked his head through it. If you're not tired, then keep copying. You keep following me around like a pet. Go live your own real life. Mom and I both laughed along with him. Then I hugged Leo and told him I was sorry. It's true that pretending to be someone else is exhausting, and I must admit I was wrong to use Kayla's name to sabotage her relationships. Tomorrow, I'll find her and apologize, even though I don't want to, but I have to find a way to end this peacefully. Then, I can focus on just being me for a while, without any of the drama. 98, 99... One more to go. And 200,000 followers. <laughs> it looks like I'm making quite an impression on the world. Hey, you're looking at the hottest beauty and lifestyle influencer of Park Springs High School. Beauty and brains? I have both. <laughs> it's not surprising, is it? Obviously, a girl like me gets loads of attention. Oh, there are nerdy Bennies. My number one fanboy, he's always following me around school and offering to help me with, well, everything. I can't blame him. I mean, I'm basically his queen. Hey, Ben. I didn't see you at my locker as usual. Are you good? I, I'm out of money today, so... Wait, Ben, don't say it like that. People will think I mugged you or something. I never ask for those groceries or sundries. Yes, you don't. Um, sorry. Okay, so that was weird. Then things got even stranger when I overheard Christine telling her friends that after being exposed, an anonymous IG singer's followers had skyrocketed to a whopping 500,000. But the thing was, she went to school here. 
She's that nobody in bio class, Stella. Stella hurried past me into class, followed by a flock of people trying to take her pick and asking her to sing. Blah, blah, blah. Some of the boys even offered to take her home after class. Poof, please. What were they thinking? Ugh, she could play the fragile and confused act on these losers, but she didn't fool me. The dropped book scenario was so overrated. But, huh? Why was Ben rushing to pick it up? What a traitor. Ben, where's my homework? He couldn't even come up with a better excuse than, um, I went out last night. This was baloney. I just heard him offer to help Stella with her homework. And guess what? This girl, still with her Little Miss shy facade up, told Ben that she could do her own essay. Ugh. Did she think she was Beyonce or what? Acting all high and thinking she's the beacon of the universe? I was furious. So she wanted a taste of fame, huh? Let's just say, as a senior in this field, having experienced its downside, it was time I taught her some manners. <laughs> After that, I made sure she became the main topic of every single talk in school. Hey, she needed to learn how this fame game worked. Everyone was giggling, pointing, and whispering behind her back. She had to cover herself with a hoodie that hid half of her face and walk through school in anxiety. Yeah, I know that paranoid feeling all too well when you obsess with why people keep on giving you odd looks. Then one day, I was putting my books back in my locker when I glimpsed someone running past me crying. It was Stella. And she dropped a note that said, If I were you, I wouldn't have shown up at school ever again. You're a joke. Gosh, do people even say these things? This was way too harsh. What happened? For God's sake. He didn't think I was the one who wrote this, did he? From that day on, Ben completely ignored me. And worse, he was glued to Stella, comforting her as people talked behind her back. Ugh. Then one day, I was tying my shoelaces when I heard some cheerleaders trying to open someone's phone. Right at that moment, Stella stepped out of the shower stall. Upset to see others violating her privacy, she tried to fight back. But oh boy, this wallflower couldn't even make them budge. <sighs> Fine, I'll help her, but only this time. You tattletale! You think you run the place now just because you're popular? Go tell Ben I didn't put that note in your locker. Better yet, call him right now. Oh, come on. Just run to the bleachers and tell that nerd. Go! What are you looking at? I went over to the bleachers to find Ben comforting Stella. What now? Snitching on me again? Actually, Stella was just telling me that you didn't write that note. Could you be any more foolish? So, you're just gonna bluntly do whatever I tell you to? Don't mind her. It's just who she is. A bit rough, but a truly great friend. Uh, I don't make friends. Yeah, I'd learned it the hard way. Back in my early days on Instagram, the only friend I trusted posted a video of me changing in the school's shower stall. I still had my tea inside my shirt, but that taught me a cruel lesson about friendships and fame. When you're famous, people will always want something from you. You can't trust anyone at all. You hear me? Stella! Who's that? Liam, Stella's friend from the music club. They look good together, don't they? What? Are you jealous of him or something? For that silly chick? Ben didn't say anything, but just blankly stared at them. Huh? He never looked at me like that anymore. Now I was no longer the Instagram queen. That meant I was no longer his queen. <sighs> it was true there was no one I could trust. 
A few days later, there was a big football match. We were going up against our rival school for the final, and Stella was singing the national anthem. Even the mayor and a local TV station showed up for it. Crazy! Ben was part of the AV team, so when some dude told me Ben wanted to talk to me, I went to the AV room to find him. What did he want to talk about? Hopefully not something to do with Stella. Ugh. But as I got there, no one was around. Huh? Right at that moment, the screen showed Stella stepping up to the podium preparing to sing. But instead of the soothing melody, a string of strange, distorted sounds came out of her mic. What was going on? What are you doing here? Ashley! He pushed me aside and hurriedly fixed the sound system. And just a minute later, things were back to normal and Stella could restart the song. Ben gave me an accusing look, then dragged me behind the bleachers, where we met up with Stella and Liam. Then Ben told her I'd messed with her mic. Oof! How could he think I was capable of something like that? Meanwhile, this Liam guy stepped in, saying it could have been a technical error. Yeah. Whatever. I went to leave, but Liam caught up with me. Weird. Weren't he and Stella having a thing? He immediately denied it, saying they were just acquaintances from music club. But you, I've been wanting to get closer to you for a while. You're the true Instagram queen, not Stella. Whoa, this guy was a top-class jerk. Just a minute ago, he had his hands wrapped around Stella and now he was trying to leech onto me. He even started leaning in to kiss me on the cheek. Quickly, I dodged it, as I met Stella's gloomy look from behind. Yikes, it was time to get out of here. I didn't sleep so well. Ugh. All this stress was bad for my skin. So I was groggily making my way along the school corridor when Stella stormed up to me. It was you, wasn't it? You were so mean to me, threatening to delete my IG account because you were so jealous Ben had left you for me. Now it's really gone, and it's all your fault. What are you talking about? I had nothing to do with your stupid account. Yeah, I gossiped about you to mess with you a bit, but that was all. And you, you think I did it too? Excuse me? Did he just ignore me? And there Ben was, my so-called friend who turned his back at me right at the moment I needed him the most. And I'd never threatened to delete her account. Why did she make it up? Was she that jealous of me and Liam yesterday? What's this? An unexpected message from Liam said, Hey Ashley, don't worry sweetie, I've got your back. What do you say we meet at 8pm in the park? Ugh! This shameless, two-faced jerk. What was he up to this time? So after class, I slid a note into Stella's locker, pretending to be from Liam, saying, I have a surprise for you. See you at 8 p.m. in the park. I arrived on time to find Liam already waiting. He kept putting on this simping act like he was madly in love with me or something. I can help you prove everything, and I only ask for one tiny favor that you'll be my girlfriend. You can do that? But how? Well, you can just simply put the blame on someone else. Let's say, Ben? Oh, honey, you don't have to do anything. Just come to me and let your man handle it. Ugh, this guy made me want to barf. But I still had to play it cool so I could figure out what this dude had up his sleeves. Sounds interesting, but I want to know more. How are you going to carry out your master plan? Honey, I've already got all the pieces of evidence in my hands. <laughs> you mean? That's right. I was the one who deleted Stella's IG account, and I know a way to blame it on someone else. You did what? Ashley, I let my jealousy blind me. So when I saw him flirting with you right in front of me, I, I just lost it. At least you're not the only fool around here. He played both of us. And for the record, he's so not my type. <laughs> <laughs> Your type? 
Hmm. Let me guess. Someone like... Ben? <laughs> He's such an idiot. He'd never realize I have feelings for him. But you're more of his type than I am. Besides, the way he just abandoned me when I needed him the most. Uh, Ashley, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. What? You've been there the entire time? Yeah, I've heard it all. Including the part about how you have feelings for me. Look, it's not what you think. I'm not into Stella that way. The thing is, I saw her singing at a coffee shop and realized right away she's my favorite anonymous singer on Instagram, so I sort of revealed her identity online. One thing led to another. I felt so guilty I just stayed by Stella's side and accidentally pushed you away. And it's not that I don't trust you. After you left, I tried to convince everyone you didn't do it, but they didn't believe me. Then Stella showed me the note in her locker of Liam asking her out. And I recognized your handwriting. I got worried, so... So... You didn't turn on me? Yeah. I know you can seem cold sometimes. But deep down, you have a good heart. So, turns out that Stella going viral meant some local lounge singer had lost a lot of gigs. So she hired Liam to delete Stella's account for good. This guy was no joke. The note, the cheerleaders, the mic accident. He was responsible for it all. Luckily for me, I'd managed to put my phone on record mode for the entire conversation I had with him. So the next day, I went ahead and reported him to the principal. Well, no bad deed goes unpunished. So I hope you enjoy your indefinite suspension, Liam. <laughs> As for me, I no longer go solo anymore as I have a new friend by my side, who now has quit social media and enjoys her passion for singing. And Ben is still Ben. Such a doofus. But my doofus. Huh. <sighs> It's been a long time since I was able to enjoy myself at a party. It sure felt good. Now just one thing left to make this night even more perfect. I'm going to make my crush mine. There he is, Jad. O-M-G. Did he just glance at me? I could feel my heart flutter. As I immersed myself in a world with only Jad and me, the face of Harry the Metal Mouth suddenly popped up from nowhere. It's time for bed, mommy's little princess. What on earth was he saying? And why was everyone running toward the window like that? I jostled into the crowd and I peeked down. Oh, for heaven's sake! The beyond cringy woman standing there holding the speakerphone was none other than my mom! Janice, it's 10 p.m. You know it's your turn to stay with me tonight. I won't be able to sleep without you. God, is there any way for me to just evaporate right here, right now? This is too embarrassing. But wait, how did she know I was here? I immediately looked over at Christine. It must be her again. Everyone knew she had a huge crush on Jad too, and would do anything to get him. She's definitely the snitch. <sighs> it's so frustrating. Anyway, let me fill you in on the situation. This crazy woman is my mom, who gave birth to not only me, but also my older sister Patty and my big brother Will. I guess we all turned out alright, but this wasn't down to mom. She didn't raise us, our nanny Randy did. You see, mom used to be an actress. She was always busy, busy, busy with her work and her numerous flings. Which resulted in each of us three having a different father. Luckily, we had Randy to take care of us, so I never felt like I was missing out on anything. On the contrary, having to see mom all day is a problem for me. A month ago, mom suddenly decided to retire and move in with me and my siblings. And who knew that an out-of-date star could be such a childish, clingy nightmare? Ugh! She didn't like being alone, so she insisted Patty and I had to take turns sleeping next to her. Then, she forced us to accompany her to the mall and be her luggage gophers and talk to her while she went for the zillionth beauty treatment of the week. One day, after an exhausting day out with mom, we entered the house to Will rushing over and shouting, Mom, 
Why did you tamper with my laptop? It turned out that Will had applied to the Juilliard Institute, one of the most famous art institutes in New York. But mom went on his laptop and deleted the school's acceptance email, meaning poor Will had missed out on the response deadline. Oh, sweetheart, I didn't mean to. I was trying to send an email to report those scammers on TV. But I must have accidentally deleted your email. That's probably a good thing anyway, son. It would be better to apply for an economics major at the State University. So our family won't have to be apart. Do you know how hard it was to get in there? Ugh, I can't do this right now. I'm done. Dinner with mom tonight was super awkward. It was just me and her, as Will was simmering in his room, and Patty… well, I don't know where she was. Afterward, I passed by her room and overheard a whimpering sound. I peeked through the gap in the door and saw Will also trying to calm Patty. James is now insisting on breaking up with me. If mom hadn't come to my company and bragged that her daughter was the manager's girlfriend, the story wouldn't have reached my boss and neither of us would be in this mess. I know, right? Mom never cared about us before. But now she thinks she can just waltz back into our lives and do whatever she wants? I've had enough of this. We're both over 18 now. Let's just move out. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Look at their determined eyes. I couldn't let this happen. What about me? Please don't go. I'm not 18 yet. Don't leave me alone with mom. I beg you. Both of them gasped when they saw me. Then after a moment of silence, Will spoke up. Okay, we won't go. But at least we need to get things back to normal. I mean, back to just the three of us and Nanny Randy living in this house. And so, Will suggested we pull a bunch of pranks that would annoy mom so much she'd end up leaving. But they were all busy with their studies and work, so they left it to me to carry out the pranks. Okay then, I'm ready. You can see how my mom was addicted to cola from the pile of empty cans over there. She often did midnight dashes to the convenience store when she ran out. So, my first plan was to make all the cola she's just bought disappear time after time. <laughs> Frustrated much? However, she was strangely calm and acted like it's no big deal at all, and even bought a drinking helmet to make sure her coke was always with her. Attempt failed. Move on to the second plan. Hide the Nintendo Switch. Why, you ask? Every night, mom made us play on that thing with her, and honestly speaking, she was the worst player ever, but she wouldn't accept it, and kept making us play those boring games with her until she won. Now, no switch, no troubles, right? Wrong! As having nothing to do, she came up with much more dumb things to ask us to do with her. From teaching her to cook, gardening, and even doing yoga with her. Having mom around is like caring for a toddler. She needs constant care and attention. It's tiring. I can't bear it anymore. You clearly didn't carry out the tricks properly. You're making the situation even worse, don't you see? <sighs> Looks like we'll have to get the job done ourselves. Oh yeah? Fine. You guys do better then. And so they carried on by using mom's ultimate fear of spiders. She's terrified of them. Even the teeny tiny ones were enough to cause her to climb onto a chair in fright until one of us removed it. So, Patty asked me to buy fake spiders online. Then she hid them all over our house. But this time, without panicking, she even picked it up and tossed it in our direction, which freaked us out instead. So, Will decided it was his turn to take some action. He planned that one evening, I would distract Randy, and in the meantime, Will would throw a feast at home then swiftly drag all his friends out, leaving a huge mess for mom. Despite never lifting a finger on cleaning, mom is actually a clean person, so it would definitely drive her crazy. But nope, once again, it didn't go as planned when Will and Patty came home to find Randy there, helping mom clean up the whole mess. Of course, I was the one who got the blame, again. Janice, you told us you were able to get Randy away from the house for a day, didn't you? I… I did ask her to take me to dad's, but like midway there, she realized she forgot her phone and insisted on going back. Oh, stop with all the excuses. You're so useless and always do things by halves. The spider trick must have also failed because you bought some cheap ones that look too obviously fake. Yeah, perhaps you've been bought off by mom, aren't you? Spill it! Ugh! Are they seriously accusing me of betrayal right now? Enough! If you're that good, then do it all yourself! I stormed off without any extra words to them. The next morning, while watching Netflix, I heard Patty and Will arguing. 
It turned out Patty let her boyfriend use her car and he forgot to come pick her up to work. So she's trying to borrow Will's bike so she wouldn't be late for a meeting. But Will wouldn't let her because he had an important dance workshop to attend. Don't your dumb class just always repeat the same wriggle moves? Take the bus instead. You won't die if you're a little late. It's not my fault your gold digging boyfriend forgot to pick you up in your own freaking car. You should have broken up with a jerk like him ages ago. They continued quarreling for a while until I saw Will launch his way down from upstairs shouting. Fine, just take it. Has anyone ever been able to stop you from anything, bossy patty? And he headed straight outside to his bike, then came back after a bit, probably to get some air to calm down. Ugh, would these two give it a rest? How are we meant to figure out a way to win against mom when they couldn't even go a day without bickering? Right then, mom walked in and told me she was going to bake the cake Patty had shown her how to do yesterday. Oops, but I forgot to buy eggs. I wonder if Will needs to use the bike today. I'll borrow it just for a bit. Ha! Great! If mom took the bike, then both of my annoying siblings would have to stop squabbling about it. Right? Yes, mom. Take it. Will said he was gonna take the bus today. It'll be faster to cycle to the grocery store anyway. Then mom hopped on the bike and shakily rode off. After a while, Will and Patty went out to the yard and of course, the bike was no longer there. After I told them that mom had already taken the bike, Will stopped dead. Because the truth was that he had purposely broken the brake so that Patty wouldn't take it. Patty tried calling mom but she didn't pick up. Then came a call from Randy. She told us that mom had crashed the bike and had been hospitalized. Oh no. We rushed there immediately. And fortunately, apart from a ligament sprain, she's fine. It could have been much worse, but that meant she had to wear a bandage for a whole month to stabilize her leg. Ugh, this was all our fault, so now we had no choice but to whimper to mom's every demand. Mom insisted I spoon feed her all of her meals. When I mentioned that there was nothing wrong with her hands, she told me that the trauma to her leg had affected her entire body. She made Patty light loads of candles, play soothing melodies, and rearrange her bedroom furniture so she had a relaxing space to heal. And she got Will to download her old movies for her and feed her popcorn while she watched them on repeat. Of course, we were really worried about her and hoped she'd recover as soon as possible, but honestly, her ridiculous demands were going too far. Then, one day, she insisted we go to a picnic, as sitting inside all day was making her depressed. So, we did exactly just that. Then, while we were walking on a slope, I dropped my bag and bent down to pick it up. Oops, I forgot to lock the wheelchair's wheels. I gasped as I saw mom whiz down the hill. But immediately, she hopped out of the chair and landed on her feet perfectly fine. Will and Patty stared in confusion at mom's casket due like performance. What about me? <laughs> nah, I'm not surprised at all, cause I was the one who set this whole thing up to expose mom. Nanny Randy has told me everything. I know she has been helping you dodging our tricks, as well as carrying out that fake bike accident. Please, why do you have to make life so difficult for us? You never even cared about us, did you? As soon as I finished, mom burst into tears. Then she began to pour her heart out. As it turned out, after her career finished, all the fortune, glory, friends, colleagues, and even men who once said that they'd love her for the rest of their lives, turned their backs on her. She was extremely lonely and needed us, her children, more than ever. Now I only have three of you. In the past, I didn't fulfill my responsibilities as a mother, and I know I let you all down. But now I realize my mistakes. I only did what I did because I wanted to draw you back close to me. Please forgive me. Give her a chance, kids. Although your mother's actions were somewhat misjudged, she only did them because she genuinely cares about you. Janice, she worried your partying was causing you to neglect your studies. Well, she didn't want your dancing dreams leading to showbiz nightmares like hers. And Patty, trust your mom, she was right this time. Turns out, mom once caught James, the manager, aka Patty's boyfriend, secretly dating the receptionist. <laughs> so she intentionally made a fuzz at Patty's office to deter the third wheel. However, what came after didn't go as she expected and led to such a mess. But now, mission complete! We came here to catch Patty's cheating boyfriend red-handed. Or should I say, her ex-boyfriend. And of course, we made sure he paid for a worthy price for his actions. Ah, <sighs> justice has been served. <laughs> now, to relax. 
Patty and Mom are getting along much better now. They even look more like an endearing couple of sisters than mother and daughter. <laughs> Will's taking Mom to one of his contemporary dance shows, so she can see how important it is to him. And me? I may be the youngest in the family, but while Will's away, it's my job to make sure Mom has someone to lean on. And I'm glad to take on this role. Maybe having my mom around isn't actually bad after all. It was just a normal day, a day like any other, and I was jamming to my favorite song as I walked home when suddenly... May I have your autograph, please? Oh, you're even more handsome in real life! Marry me! OMG, how annoying. Don't they have anything better to do? So I took a deep breath and then blurted out, Oh, I'm starving. This weather really got me craving for some tacos. If only... Predictably, without letting me finish the sentence, they rushed off and five minutes later, the girls returned with enough tacos to feed me for the whole week. I grabbed one, chewed on it with my mouth open, then wiped my mouth and burped so loud, they gave me disgusted looks and quickly left. And indeed, my Twitter feed that evening and it didn't disappoint. I saw lots of posts from fans saying I was rude, greedy, and ungrateful. <laughs> These dumb fans should stop fantasizing about their idols, really. Okay, enough internet for today. Now, I have to review the script for tomorrow's performance. I'm passionate about magic and participate in all the big-name shows in this city and beyond. Every day involves vigorous research into new tricks. Clearly, it's paid off. Hi, I'm Ashton, and my latest magic show is hugely successful. But alas, this isn't me. This is me. And that guy is Jasper, my identical twin brother. And that cute girl is Miranda. She's our schoolmate, but also our assistant. She's the real wind of change to our shows, as well as being the most adorable girl I've ever seen. But I've never had the courage to tell her that. We did a great job today, especially you, Ashton. The script was incredible, and the audience adored it. Uh, th th I don't know how I can ever thank you guys enough. I've learned so much, and I'm having lots of fun working with you both. This was my opportunity to tell Miranda how I feel. I opened my mouth to speak, but then a smiling Jasper came up alongside her, touched her shoulder, and said, And you too, sweetie. You're so talented and charming. The audience thinks you're amazing, as do I. Miranda smiled back, and then they both started chatting and walking away, leaving me behind. <sighs> to be honest... We might have been identical in looks, but our personalities were polar opposites. My brother thrives off attention while I'm kind of shy. When we were little kids, everyone preferred Jasper over me. It didn't matter that our mom dressed us in the same clothes. People always swarmed around Jasper and called him handsome, bright and smart. But me? Well, I may as well have been invisible. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't hate my brother. But I'm fed up with always being a shadow next to him. See? Even these trophies have Jasper's name on them, not mine. Hey, Ashton, I got this for you a few days ago, but I forgot. Have fun. I smiled wryly and mumbled back, thank you, but honestly, inside I felt terrible. I was the mastermind behind our performances, not him. I wrote the scripts, created the tricks, and even designed our costumes. But why did he get all the glory out of it, and even became an internet sensation while no one took me seriously? Oh, I forgot to tell you. The fans yesterday were Jasper's, not mine. I'm always being mistaken for him. So yesterday, I decided to have some fun and play a small trick on him. It was funny because Jasper was completely bewildered about where this scandal had come from. Ha! Again, Jasper's fans thought my account was his private one, so they bombarded me with messages full of tasteless nonsense. Jasper, I love you so much. Jasper, I'll sue you for stealing my heart. Have you seen my boyfriend? He's reading this text right now and his name is Jasper. Ugh. I was about to turn off the phone and go back to bed when suddenly I spotted Jasper commenting on Miranda's new post. And they just kept replying back and forth. Ugh, these fangirls already made me feel so sick. They see a charming-ish, good-looking guy and they act like a magpie who spotted a shiny thing. And now even Miranda seems to be smitten with him. Okay, fine. I'll show you how manly or handsome and flashy Jasper is. <laughs> No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's still me. But I'm wearing my bro's clothes and have styled my hair just like his. Now, let's have some fun. First off, our Jasper needs some makeup. Now, let's look the part. As planned, it wasn't long before people started recognizing me and started videoing. So, I deliberately gave a horrified yelp and ran away. 
As expected, those videos were soon passed around on social media. And the comments were coming non-stop. Hey, some YouTubers even made reaction videos to that. Oh man, this is so hilarious. I was laughing so much my stomach ached. Suddenly, Jasper stormed into my room. He didn't even knock, and he looked all serious. Hey, what's this? Our class was going to have a costume party, remember? And I decided to go disguised as a girl. Okay, but why wear my clothes and style your hair like mine? Uh, chill out, bro. I must have grabbed yours by accident. We used to wear the same things all the time when we were younger anyway. Don't be so touchy. As for the hair, I was just trying something new. He gave me a suspicious look, sighed, then he left. The next day, I thought the whole school would be bad-mouthing Jasper about the videos. But to the contrary. The fangirls even considered it cute and inspiring, as he's breaking gender norms. I'm speechless. Ugh, whatever. Their reactions didn't matter. The only important thing was what my muse, Miranda, thought about all this. <laughs> nice dress. Can I borrow it sometime? Oh, that was... That was the preparation for the upcoming costume party, lol. Ooh, no, I mean, it's cute, though. <laughs> Gosh, my plan's now officially a massive fail. I stayed there watching them for a bit, and she just kept on playing with her hair as she gave my brother these gooey-eyed looks. Ugh. Then, to annoy me even further, right in that afternoon, Mr. Wainwright, our principal, came into class, stopped in front of Jasper's desk, and asked him, Jasper, will you please do me the honor of performing on behalf of the school at the town hall launch event next week? Jasper immediately accepted the invitation, and the principal thanked him, then left. Ahem, what about me? He didn't so much as look my way. You know, I'm the one who creates the content and everything. Jasper's just the one who acts following my script. This is so frustrating. All this unfairness wouldn't have happened if I didn't have glossophobia. Yeah, public speaking scares me out of my wits. So I could just sit there, fist clenched, feeling my anger grow. This sucks. I was backstage with Jasper going over the show itinerary. When Jasper blurted out, I want to make a small change. I want to confess my feelings toward Miranda at the end of the show. He pointed to the stage and continued, I'm going to hang a box of flower petals on the ceiling, and during the applause, you'll pull the strings and whoosh! The flower petals will fall down on us as I confess. How's that? Romantic, huh? I was dumbfounded, but still managed to utter, Oh, yeah, that's that sounds good. But my heart was suffocated. There's no way I can let that happen. So I came up with a plan. Since I was the one who's in charge of the props. That day I secretly replaced the box of flower petals at the end of the rope with a bucket of dirty water instead. Didn't that sound much more fun? <laughs> then before the show, I pulled Miranda aside and told her, Jasper has a surprise plan for you. You're going to love it. Once she received this gift, there's no way she'd ever want to see Jasper again. Ha! I couldn't wait. After the show ended and the crowd applauded, I waited for the signal wink from Jasper. Then I pulled the strings and watched on. Oh, no. Technical error. The rope holding the bucket had jammed, and now the whole bucket was falling. Jasper dived forward and knocked Miranda out of the way. The bucket whacked him in the head. He collapsed, and stinky, muddy water went everywhere. The whole venue was in an uproar. Oh, my God. What on earth did I just do? Ah! I held my head and shouted. But wait. Why was it so dark? Hey, this is my room, isn't it? I felt so cold, drenched in sweat and shivering. Reached my phone to look at the calendar. I had to pinch myself while my heart was still pounding. Turns out D-Day is yet to come. It's tomorrow. So I was just dreaming? I hadn't really harmed my brother, had I? I rushed into Jasper's room to check. Phew. He was lying there playing on his phone. I felt so bad just because of childish jealousy. I'd almost harmed my own brother. I thought for a moment and then walked over to him to confess everything. Jasper, I'm sorry, but I have to say this. All the scandals recently were done by me, deliberately. The tacos incident and the Walmart one, too. He looked up from his phone and sighed. <sighs> Why would you do that? Because I like Miranda, too. Huh? Really? I, I didn't know that. Why didn't you tell me? I, I was even going to ruin our performance tomorrow. Okay, just scold me or hit me anything. I deserve it. Jasper clenched his fist and held it up in front of me. I closed my eyes and was ready to take it. But then, to my surprise, he patted me on the shoulder and said calmly, I'm angry. No, furious. But honestly, I'm more disappointed. We're brothers. We're family, you remember. But I'll take the blame too. 
I suppose I do milk the fame a bit too much sometimes. I know you're the one who comes up with all the killer content, and I suppose I shouldn't have been so open with my feelings towards Miranda. I should have stopped to consider yours. After talking for a while, we finally agreed that after the performance tomorrow, we would text Miranda to confess how we feel toward her, and whoever she accepted, it would be God's will. The performance was outstanding, and we even got to take photos with the mayor and shake his hand. But the most thrilling moment was this. When we got home, Jasper and I sat next to each other and texted Miranda to confess our love. The message popped up on our phones one after another. So, who will win in this game of love? I held my breath and opened the message. Ashton, I feel the same, but please keep it a secret from Jasper. I don't want him to feel awkward. X. I was about to shout out with joy when I saw Jasper looking smug. We looked at each other in bewilderment, and then held the two phones side by side to compare. Oh my gosh. Miranda texted me and Jasper the same message. She just switched our names around. Gosh. So she planned to love us both in secret? All this time, and my so-called muse actually was just some sneaky little snake. Dang. And to think I almost lost my brother over her. She's really not worth it. We were stunned, then we both burst out laughing. And you can guess what we did after, right, of course. We said bye bye to Miranda and found a new assistant. Hopefully we both won't get hurt feelings for this one. Huh. It's true that I used to be sick of being my bro's sidekick, but it's different now. I understand that even though we look the same, we each have our own personalities. That's why there are different things in life that might be suitable for him, but not for me and vice versa. And you know what? I'm proud of that. Besides, I'm working hard to overcome my shyness and put my face in the light. People are finally getting to know me, and though I'm still the guy behind the scenes, I also have a huge fan base now. Hey, what's with the long face? Oh, hey, it, it's nothing, just a bad day. You know, you can tell me everything, right? I'm your best friend, so I know when something is up with you. Spit it out. Okay, you're right, as always. <laughs> I think you should hang on to something, because this is shocking news. I- Oh? My god. Who is that? He looks so gorgeous. Sue, are you even listening? Huh? What did you just say? I turned to him, but he mumbled out typical, then walked away. Jeez, what's his problem? Oh, that was Lucas earlier. My best friend since kindergarten. Don't mind him, he's always like this. But whatever, let's get back to this handsome guy. So it turns out his name is Alex, and he's new here. I knew it, because such a pretty boy like him would never go unnoticed by me. The next morning, I couldn't wait to walk to school with Lucas. I had some amazing news to tell him. It happened to me the night before, during my shift at the diner. Lucas, you won't believe who was in the diner yesterday. Robert Downey Jr.? What? No, it was Alex, the new student. Gosh, Lucas, you've got to help me get his attention. You're on the baseball team together, right? Huh? Do you like that guy? Seriously? Duh. I mean, look at him. He's like Timothy Chalamet's twin brother. So will you help me, please? Ugh. Fine. Hmm. I did hear him say he likes girls on roller skates. I have an idea. The next time he comes to the diner, serve him on skates. It's a sure way to impress him. Oh, yes! That's a great idea! I hugged Lucas to thank him. So, the next time Alex came into the diner, I took out my roller skates and was ready to serve him his spaghetti. I'm kinda a novice on skates, so I slowly slid over to him. So far, so good until I didn't see that somebody had spilled their milkshake all over the floor. And yes, of course, I slipped. Oh no! I quickly covered my head to avoid the spaghetti plate, but... Huh? The plate had fallen on the floor, but where was the spaghetti? I looked around. Oh, snap! I found it! It landed on Alex's head! It was so humiliating. But worse still, as hard as I tried, I couldn't get back on my feet. Ugh, stupid skates. I repeatedly apologized to him. At first, Alex looked totally shocked. Then, perhaps because of my pathetic look, he couldn't hold it in anymore and burst out laughing. <laughs> well, at least you dare to slide on them. I, on the other hand, am not a big fan of those. <laughs> what? What did he mean by that? 
Ugh, Lucas! The next day, I went looking for Lucas to confront him. He was easy to find, as he was in his favorite place to browse in town, the sneaker store. Why did you tell me Alex likes roller skates? Because he definitely doesn't. <laughs> maybe I misheard him. Oh, wait, he likes girls in superhero costumes. That's right. What? That sounds ridiculous. Forget it, I'm not listening to you anymore. Go give your advice to some other poor girl, not me. What's up with Lucas? Why would he give me such bad advice? It's like he wanted me to fail. But why? Oh my goodness. Was he, maybe, into me? Nah, nonsense. Still, I had a feeling about it. So I decided to avoid Lucas as much as possible. I came up with loads of excuses not to hang out with him, such as mom was driving me to school and I was skipping lunch because I was on a diet. Ugh, it was so exhausting. I mean, have you ever tried sneakily eating your lunch in class so you don't pass out from hunger? However, this was necessary, as we both needed some space. It's the only way to keep our friendship safe. But then one day, Lucas messaged me. Can we talk after school? I have something important to tell you. Oh no. Was he going to confess his feelings? But if he did it, our friendship would be ruined. I couldn't let that happen, so I didn't meet him. Instead, I ran straight home. He called me a bunch of times, but I ignored them all. I ghosted him, to be exact. Jeez, I wasn't proud, but I had to save our friendship from stupid Cupid. But then the next time I saw him, he only gave me a hurt look, then purposely walked off in the other direction. Oh, no. Now it was basically like a cold war between us. Ugh. We might not have been hanging out with each other, but I was still keeping an eye on Lucas. I'd been watching him for a couple of days, and it looked like he was having a tough time. He must have figured out my rejection, so now he was miserable. Oh, dear Lucas, I didn't want this to happen, but I can't risk losing our friendship. But then I noticed something. One time, the whole school went on a picnic trip. I watched Lucas from afar and noticed that he was giving dagger looks to a bunch of girls. Hmm, hang on. They were surrounding Alex. I even saw him trip another girl up who was going to join the group of girls adoring Alex, and then he made out it was an accident. Another time I overheard him telling girls from other classes who were standing by the class door trying to get a glimpse of Alex that he pretended to be all cold and quiet because he had hideous teeth, which of course wasn't true because he had a smile that could light up a room. Ah, uh, looks like it wasn't just me. Lucas didn't want any other girls going near Alex. Did he hate Alex that much? Or, or, he likes Alex? For heaven's sake! Stop thinking such nonsense, Sue! Your head was messing with you. Then one day, my mom heard that Lucas's mom was sick, so she made some chicken soup and told me to bring it over to his mom. I didn't want to go around there. I mean, what if I saw Lucas? Awkward. But who was I to deny a sick lady soup? When I arrived, I opened the door and let myself in as I usually do. And that's when I heard the conversation between Lucas and his mom. Lucas, you need to forget about Alex. I want to, but I can't, mom. He's always on my mind. <sighs> anyway, the important thing is your health. You need to eat something. Look at you, you're not getting any better. How can I eat after your dad left us? It's like all this time I've been living in a lie. I'm so sorry. Wait a moment. My Sherlock Holmes intuition was kicking in. Now everything makes sense. Why Lucas was sad for a couple of days, why I hadn't seen his dad for a while, and why his mom was suddenly sick. It's because Lucas was gay. His father probably didn't take it so well, so he left, which was really devastating for Lucas's mom. But I'm his best friend. Why didn't he tell me? Man, he hid it really well. But not only that, he also tried to sabotage me when he knew I had a crush on Alex. Well, it turns out we weren't best friends like I thought. Ugh. But no, I couldn't just ignore this. I needed to talk to Lucas to clear things up. The next day, Lucas had baseball practice. So I went to find him at the field, but he wasn't there. I asked some of his teammates, but nobody knew where he was. Hmm, where could he have gone? And that's when I saw Lucas with Alex behind the bleachers. Well, well, well. Look at them. A lovey-dovey. They talked for a bit, then each of them walked away in a different direction. I watched them from a distance with my arms folded. That traitor! I was so ready to yell in Lucas's face. And that's when our eyes met. He was startled when he saw me, like he'd just been busted. Well, 
it was technically the correct word to describe the situation. Sue, Sue, what are you doing here? Why do you look so flustered? Come on, I know about your relationship between you and Alex, so you don't need to hide it anymore. How, how, how did you know about it? I heard you and your mom talking about it, but I don't understand. How could you do this to me? You knew that I liked Alex. I know, but I couldn't explain. I was so ashamed. You should have talked to me first, but instead you stole Alex from me. Best friends don't do that to each other. Hold on a minute. What did you just say? I stole Alex from you? What do you mean? Ugh, come on. Just stop with all this hiding and lying. I know you two are together. What? Why was he overreacting like this? Was what I just said not true? Well, turns out it wasn't. I was totally wrong. Just one thing was for sure. My detective intuition sucked. And that's when Lucas told me the truth. Lucas and Alex weren't in love. Lucas even hated Alex because he's Lucas's half-brother. Oh my. It's like I got lost in a telenovela or something. When my mom was pregnant with me, my dad got drunk and made a big mistake with a colleague of his. She fell pregnant with Alex, but my dad didn't know about it. Then a month ago... Alex's mom was diagnosed with a serious illness. She didn't want him to end up alone if she couldn't make it. So she showed up in dad's life again and messed everything up. Oh my god. So that's why Lucas's mom all of a sudden got so skinny and sick. And Lucas's dad didn't leave them. No, it's because his mom kicked his dad out of the house. I wanted to tell you in the canteen the other day, but you were too starry-eyed over Alex to listen. This made me mad, so I tried everything to prevent you from getting close to him. My family's broken because of him, so I don't want my best friend to fall for someone like that. Oh, it turns out I'm a really bad friend. My best friend had problems at home, and I didn't even know it. No, because I was busy daydreaming about a guy I barely knew. I apologized to Lucas and promised that I would pay more attention to him. And then we hugged. On the plus side... At least none of my crazy theories were true. <laughs> so it turns out it was all just one big misunderstanding. The Cold War between us ended, and our friendship remains as amazing as ever. I also managed to convince Lucas and Alex to give each other a chance. After all, they're half-brothers, and what happened between their parents wasn't their fault. Besides, Alex's mom is seriously ill, so he needs Lucas more than ever. It's great hanging out with them both and seeing them laughing and joking about... Ah... <sighs> peace at last. The three of us have become pretty great friends. Oh, do you want to hear something funny? Lucas actually offered to match make me with Alex. <laughs> but it's okay. I refused. Why, you ask? Well, the three of us are such awesome friends now, and I don't want anything to ruin that. Pretty mature of me, right? <laughs> I was walking in the classroom when a girl shouted, Don't come in, we're getting changed! I immediately stopped still. I heard them laughing like squeaking dolphins. Not knowing what to do, I frantically turned around to leave and bang! Twinkle, twinkle, little star, I muttered to myself. What was that wall doing there, and why was there all these stars around in broad daylight? I fell to my knees, and yuck, my nose was bleeding. Then I saw this pretty girl staring down at me. Alas, was she an angel? Don't worry, with our help you'll soon get used to this school. I I'm Dolly, by the way. Then she winked at me. Nope, she wasn't an angel. She was a student. So, my name's Dean, and the first day in my new job as a homeroom teacher wasn't going as planned. I have experience teaching physics at co-ed school, but never in a private all-girls school. You see, houses for teachers and high salaries were the reasons why I chose to transfer here. To be honest, if I haven't overindulged in the stock market and ended up in debt, I certainly wouldn't have taken off from home and severed all contact with my wife, Anna. She paid all my debts, and that was too much for a man's pride. So here I was, trying to make a quick buck so I could pay her back and win back her heart. From the get-go, I knew this school would be different to what I was used to. As when I first came to meet the principal, I saw a group of giggling teenage girls huddled outside of her office. They whispered among each other, started taking pictures of me, and even made finger heart signs. At the end of the meeting, the principal said, You'll be the second male teacher in our school, and between you and me, Mr. Richmond is somewhat of an old fogey, so I think you'll be a wind of change here, she grinned. After that, she introduced me to the other teachers in the staff room. As I shook hands with Mr. Richmond, he smirked and said, They're going to eat you alive. What a strange old man. What did he even mean by that? 
I'm a confident professional guy, and they were a bunch of teenage girls. This job would be a breeze, right? Then I turned and saw a group of students with their lips pressed to the frosted glass, then they giggled and ran off. Anyway, back to my first full day here. I let Dolly help me up to my feet, stuck a bit of tissue in my nose to stop the bleeding, then reminded myself of my motto. To know oneself is true progress. Then I took a deep breath and tried to start my lecture in a professional manner. Dozens of pairs of eyes glared up at me. I felt like I was being eyed up for dinner. Then there was the mess. Flung about the place were gym clothes. Ew, and even worse, there was this odd smell that hit my olfactory organs directly. Um, it wasn't the sweet sense of perfume or anything. It was like intense body odor. How strange. Maybe my sense of smell had been affected by my bleeding nose. Never mind, the lesson must go on. When I was walking down the class, a shout came from the corner. Alert code red! Then this pink dart flew past my face, and I had to lean back to dodge it. At that moment, my heart stopped beating for a second. Just like in a Japanese manga, the girl caught it in a ninja way. But wait, I looked closely and found out that it was just a tampon. My God, what on earth was going on? Well, my first day on the job had been eventful. I needed a lie down and a strong drink. But I bet things would calm down when the excitement of my presence wore off, right? <laughs> Wrong. As each day seemed to get crazier. I soon had my own fan club. As every lunchtime, Dolly and her friends followed me around. And every morning they brought me a bottle of juice with some cute note stuck to it. Then things spiraled, as one day in the cafeteria, Dolly sidled up to me, twizzled the strand of her hair and said, Sir, I like you. Knowing full well what she meant, I tried to say as nonchalantly as I could, Um, I like you too, you're a good student. Then she put her arm around me and in a flirty voice said, No, I mean I like you. I turned as red as a tomato and instantly loosened my tie. Jeez, it was hot in here. Help, send help. I forced a smile and politely told her I had a meeting, then I walked off as quickly as possible. Talk about being intense, but luckily, I had sports day to distract me from all the teenage girl hormones. I was in the athletic squad back in the day, so I reserved my spot in the teacher's long-distance running race. As I was warming up, I saw Dolly and her friends standing at the sideline with a huge banner with my face on it. The other school teachers all giggled when they saw it. Cringe. Then the race started, and I was miles ahead of everyone else. This was an absolute breeze. I would definitely be the champion. Then I heard Dolly whistle over at me, and another girl shouted, We love you, sir! Then, ugh, I tripped over my own feet and fell over and sprained my ankle. Ouch! One by one, the teachers overtook me. Even Mr. Richmond. Talk about humiliating. I wanted the ground to gobble me up. But then my fan club hurried over to me, and Dolly said, You're still the best. You even look more handsome when running. Then she wiped the sweat off my forehead using a towel. I was too tired and my pride was too dented to react. I didn't think Dolly's crush on me was a big deal. This was common for teenage girls, right? But then one afternoon I finished late and was walking across the girls' grounds when this aggressive-looking dude blocked my way. He pushed my shoulder and said, You better stop flirting with my little Dolly and stay away from her, you hear me? Huh? What was going on? Then Dolly appeared. She looked different than usual with her face covered in makeup. She charged up to the guy, stared at him, and yelled out, Hank, we're so over, so go away. I'm into him, not you. Contrary to that gentle look in class, this version of Dolly was quite frightening. Just a few lifts of her eyebrows were enough to make that guy sulk away. Then Dolly turned to me and sighed. <laughs> Sorry about him. He made me realize that I like men, not boys. Then without giving me time to reply, she blew me a kiss, then shimmied off. I stood there stunned. Um, what just happened? Dear God, please get me out of this mess now. From then on, I tried my best to avoid Dolly and the rest of my fan club. I had my lunch with the boring teachers in the staff room and never marked work in my classroom anymore. One day, I was strolling along the corridor when I spotted Dolly up ahead. So I quickly turned up a different corridor and bump, I walked straight into the new girl and we both tumbled over. Books and stationery flying everywhere. I frantically apologized and helped her up, but she looked at me and said, Oh, so this is where you're hiding. What? Uh-oh. Uh it was Chloe, my sister-in-law. I quickly gathered up her stuff and bundled it into her arms, then I rushed off. She shouted after me. Do you know that Anna's worried sick about you? A stab of pain raced through my heart. Without turning back, I told her, I'm sorry, I'll go home when I'm able to pay her back. Great. Now I had Chloe to avoid too. She was persistent. She waited for me after class and nagged me to come back home. But who can understand my feeling? I could never look at Anna's face again until I earned enough money. 
Then one day after school, when I was leaving my classroom, I received a message from Chloe. I'm at the pool. Please come. I'm in big trouble. What was going on? Afraid that something bad was happening to her, I rushed over there, sweaty and out of breath, to see her standing there looking perfectly fine. Confused, I asked her what was up, and she shrugged and said, I accidentally dropped my earring in the pool. What? I frowned. I don't have time for childish games. I was about to leave, but then I saw a furious-looking Dolly heading over. Hey, weird red-headed girl, just stop finding ways to flirt with my Deanie, you understand me? Chloe smirked, and with crossed arms, she replied. It's you who should stay away from <laughs> Deanie, she chuckled. You surely don't want to wave a red flag at a bull. Dolly let out a war cry before she charged at Chloe. But she dodged out of the way, and Dolly fell headfirst into the pool. Chloe rolled her eyes. Now, let me guess, she's going to pretend that she can't swim. Sure enough, Dolly started screaming. Help me, please, Dean. I'm dying. I thought it was another trick of Dolly's, but no, she was still struggling under the water. So I quickly jumped in to rescue her. Oh, no, she wasn't conscious, and I started giving her mouth to mouth. After trying for a while, Dolly seemed to regain consciousness. But when I was a little bit relieved, I heard a familiar voice behind me. What are you doing, Dean? I stopped and turned around. I couldn't believe it. There, with a look of complete distress on her face, was Anna. Dolly sat up and said, Um, who's she? I'm his wife, but I think I shouldn't be here. And then she stormed off. I rushed after her and tried telling her it wasn't what it looked like. She let out this heartbroken wail, then sobbed out. You left me without saying a word, and then I find you kissing some teenager. I never want to see you again. Then she took off her wedding ring and threw it at me. I honestly thought I'd lost Anna forever. My heart was breaking. But then a sheepish-looking dolly came over to us and said, I'm sorry, I wasn't drowning. I made it up so he would kiss me. It's all my fault. Please don't be mad at him. Then Chloe appeared and backed up Dolly's story. She also confessed that she'd set the meeting between me and Anna up at the pool so we could talk to each other and sort it all out. But then Dolly appeared and messed it all up. After that, Dolly finally realized that I'm a happily married man. She stopped all of her fan club stuff. But she still brings me juice every day, only this time with an apology note stuck to it. So I finally realized what a jerk I'd been and I tried my best to make it up to Anna. I shouldn't have just ran away from my troubles and left the woman I love in the dark like that. That wasn't fair. As for this job, I guess it isn't so bad after all. So I'm still sticking around even though I'm finished paying Anna back. It's good for my ego being the hunk around the place, and now I'm kind of used to groups of giggling teenage girls and their mood swings. Ha! Hi, I'm Kaylee from Washington. I might dress like a boy, but I'm actually the girliest girl you could ever meet. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I was born with shiny blonde hair and blue eyes, just like my mom. I never met my dad, but it wasn't really a big deal. There's no need to live in some fancy castle to feel like a princess. I was already one in my mom's eyes. She always pampered me with the cutest things in the world. You could give Rapunzel a run for her money, sweetheart. But tragically, mom left me in an accident when I was 10, and I had to move in with Selina, my mom's friend. She lived in a mansion where there were so many people dressed just like her. As soon as they saw me, they started to ooh and ah at me. What a porcelain doll. Bet she'll win any beauty pageants. She's just too lovely to be real. Shh, Miss Sanchez here doesn't like anyone who's prettier than her daughter. Yeah, she's been in a foul mood ever since the master left for his mistress. I only caught a bit of what they said before Selena dragged me into a corner. Sweetie, you heard them. Boys are bad news. Just look at your dad, for example. So stay away from them. Got it? Um... And the only way to repel them is if you look more like them. Then she told me to wear contact lenses to hide my blue eyes, cut my long locks, threw away my dress collection, and bought me clothes that basically drowned me. And voila, I look just like a teenage boy. One day, I was alone in the kitchen when I heard someone shouting, Bring me two smoothies now! I brought in two avocado shakes, but accidentally splashed one all over this girl's face, turning her into Shrek. Watch what you're doing! My daughter's angel face is destined to be Miss USA! How dare you! I, I'm i sorry, ma'am. Relax, mom. Avocado face masks are all the rage anyway. Sadly, I still had to take my punishment, but suddenly the girl walked towards me. 
Hey, I'm Beatrix. Let's go and play. But I'm... Don't worry, I'm here. My mom won't punish you anymore. Then she took me to her room. Wow, she even has a castle inside? Beatrix then put some wigs and makeup on me. I looked at myself in the mirror and memories of my mom came rushing back. I quickly pulled out the photo of her that I carried with me all the time. We looked so alike. I was about to take my lenses out when Selena stormed in and dragged me back to my room. Don't you ever let me catch you here again and keep your distance from Little Mistress. We're not from the same world as people like them. Remember that? But little did Selena know, Beatrix had just asked her mom to allow me to go to school with her. And ever since then, we've been literally inseparable. I mean, literally. She clung to me from living room to kitchen, from home to school. Honestly, the only time I could have a moment of peace was when I went to the restroom. Phew. Oh, maybe not. And each time we hung out was more than torture. I had to fight against the urge to act girly, hit my own hands whenever they started to reach for those pretty things, and now they ended up swollen. Think I'll glue them in my pockets next time. Then, one day, I arrived at school to the most terrible news ever. Kaylee, one of our female rugby players got injured, so I put you on the team. What on earth? I don't even know what rugby is. Here's Austin, your rugby coach. If you need anything, he's your guy. You know him? He might be handsome, but something about him screams bad news. People call him awful Austin. You better watch out. And she wasn't exaggerating at all. On the very first day, he already pushed me to my absolute limits in training, but I almost passed out. In the agility ladder exercises, I got my feet tangled up in the line and fell to the ground. But instead of a hand, all I got was his soulless look. Then one time, I missed the ball, causing it to hit another player. Hey, is this a joke to you? Do it properly. Keeping all Celine's words in mind, I zipped my mouth up and ignored him, who was definitely a boy. Oi, what's the attitude? You're bringing the whole team down. See? Cat got your tongue? Faking dumb doesn't work here. From tomorrow, extra training. No excuses. Beatrix was right. He was a devil. I was dragging my aching body home after training when I noticed a cute cat and stopped to pet it. The cat ran away, so I followed it and ended up at the back gate of the school, which was totally off limits. I've never been here before. Whoa, look at this beautiful mural. It's so mesmerizing. What you doing here? Awful Austin? Uh, um, I just... Anyway, did you paint this? It's amazing. Of course not. Stop crying. He was such a terrible liar. But to be honest, I didn't expect some jock like him to be interested in art, let alone actually be good at it. What are you two doing here? Don't move! Oh no, the guard has spotted us! Austin immediately grabbed my hands and started running. We hid in a small alley, and he pressed me against the wall with his strong arms. My heart was racing like crazy, and I could feel his too. We were so close that our faces were only inches apart, and the warmth of his breath made me blush even more, so I accidentally let out a squeal. Thankfully, before things could get any more awkward, the guard was gone. Don't even think of breathing a single word about this. Weirdly, this time his words didn't hurt at all. Maybe because I knew, beneath his tough jock exterior, he had his own secret, just like me. I like your painting, so no need to hide it. Austin stopped for a bit, then kept walking. But I'm sure I caught a smile. After that day, he started to behave quite differently. More gently. He no longer went berserk at me, but helped me get through the training instead so I could catch up with the other players. I just had my first successful kick. Yay! I turned around to cheer with Austin, but out of nowhere, the ball came hurtling right at me, and he instantly caught it with one hand, while the other held me by the waist. Okay, that was awkward. This week, there'd be a senior prom at school, and Beatrix insisted we go. Of course, I gave her a no, but she was literally a leech, so I had no other choice. Wear this, Kay. It's a matching set. It'll be so lame if I wear this alone, please. Fine, but only because you've given me no choice. Yay, love ya. Eek! Wow, it smelled so good. What if I put it on? But wait, what about Selena? Forget it. It's not like she'll be at the prom. YOLO. I stepped into the ballroom with this gorgeous outfit on, my blue eyes, and the necklace my mom gave me. Everyone jaw dropped as soon as they saw me, and that's when I noticed Austin coming towards me. Hey, you look different tonight. Uh, I mean in a good way. Wanna dance? Sorry, girls time. 
Kaylee, look at the tasty food corner. Told you we had to come here. Oh, Beatrix, my friend here is starving. Can you show him where to grab a bite? Wow, sure, handsome. We have cupcakes, biscuits, uh, and even brownies. Isn't this called choosing boys over friends? <laughs> Good for her, anyway. <laughs> Then Austin gently led me in the waltz. He looked exactly like a prince from a fairy tale. As we fell in step, letting the rhythm control our movements, I felt my whole body tingle. The sparks were definitely flying. But suddenly, the music changed into trance. We looked into each other's eyes for a second. Then, hand in hand, ran across the crowd until we got outside. I could never imagine a tomboy could become like this. Actually, I'm not a tomboy. What do you mean? That's when I decided to tell him everything about how I was obsessed with girly things, but had to suppress it all my life. It felt so good to let it all out after burying it the whole time. And Austin was such a good listener. Wow, Kaylee, I'm so sorry. Actually, I've also had to hide my passion for arts to help my father's business too. So what you said to me the other day really opened up something in me. So things were not easy for him either, huh? Suddenly, he pulled out a sketchbook and started drawing me. I wish this moment would last forever. His face then went all serious, but not in a cold way as usual, but instead, beaming with passion. Our eyes met, and I thought my heart was gonna jump out of my chest. And yes, I hope this moment would last forever too. Then suddenly, he leaned closer to fix my hair. I was ready for a kiss. Then, Kaylee! Selena, how did she find out about this? Man, you know what's coming next. I can't believe you'd be this reckless! You're not my mom! And not every boy is like my dad, you were wrong! Mind your manners! Get changed! Now! Right then, Mrs. Sanchez came to interrupt us. Hang on, are her eyes blue? And what's this? Uh, um, don't mind her. I bought this half price at the swap meet, ma'am. Then she signaled for me to flee the scene. If mom were here, she'd understand the way I feel. Blinking back tears, I suddenly felt a warm hand on my shoulder. Are you alright? I saw you leave with Austin. Did he cut your hair? It looks shorter. I'm okay, Beatrix. Oh wow, I have a similar necklace that my dad gave to me. This was from my dad too, except that I don't actually know who he is. Maybe your dad is my dad? <laughs> Zero for the joke, Beatrix. Oh, but why did Selena lie about the necklace to Miss Sanchez? So I went to find Selena right after, and she told me the most shocking thing ever. Beatrix's dad, the former master here, was actually my dad. He seduced mom, who used to be a maid here too. When Mrs. Sanchez found out, both of them were kicked out of the house. Then knowing mom was having me, he dumped her right away. Selena was afraid Mrs. Sanchez could see mom in me, and so she had to force me to disguise myself. Wow, this was seriously messed up. Keep your identity a secret by all means or we're doomed. Understand? I was in complete shock, but I knew I had to be more careful from then on. For the whole week after, Mrs. Sanchez seemed to be in a good mood. One day, she even asked me to go shopping with her. But a wedding dress studio? Is there a wedding coming, ma'am? Yes, and it's yours, you filth. You have to pay for your mom's karma for stealing my husband. So she knew everything? I tried to bolt away, but immediately got caught. Then she took me to this luxurious house, and guess who I met? Kaylee, what are you doing here? Uh, Austin? W what? What do you want? I was still bewildered when a man pushed a boy in a wheelchair into the living room. Hi, Mr. Fisher, about our arrangement. This is the bride here. She and Ivan here will make the perfect couple. Hope you like this gift as my thanks for your favor. My blessings for the marriage and your family. Dad, what is she talking about? Ivan will get married to this girl. I've already settled everything so that Ivan can have a bright future without worrying about anything. Excuse me? I've had to put aside my art dream to enroll in business school, as you wished, and now you want to control my brother's life too? I object to this marriage, because I love her! Then he pulled me away, leaving Mr. Fisher frozen in shock. Kaylee, I'm so sorry you had to meet my dad in such an awful way. I promise to never let anyone treat you like this again. No worries, I have to thank you instead. Your words really woke up the courage in me. Austin offered to help me talk things out, but it's time for me to fight for my own good. I came back home to see Mrs. Sanchez flying into a rage. How dare you bring your face back into this house? You cruel woman, I will not marry someone else just to pay off your debt. Right at that moment, Selena walked in and she literally turned into a bull. 
How dare you do that to my child? I had to stop her from lunging towards Mrs. Sanchez. So how about what you all have done to me? Do you know what I've been through all these years? Her mom stole my husband, and you just expect me to put it aside? Then, she collapsed and burst into tears. Suddenly, I felt bad for her. I'm sorry for everything that happened to you, but it doesn't mean you have to punish yourself with it or grant yourself the right to dictate others like that. She owes you nothing, and you have no right to control others' lives. Right after that, Selena and I packed our stuff and left the house. Walking through that door, we felt more free than ever before. After all that drama, it took us some time to get our lives back on track. From all the money Selena had saved working as a maid, she was able to open her own bakery and take back control of our lives. And so do I. Finally, I'm back to my princess style. But after all those craziest things happened, something never changed. Oh my god, oh my god, we're half sisters! Yay! Ah, uh, my mom said she felt so guilty about what happened, but asked me to keep it a secret. Oops. And about that guy, you ask? He worked things out with his dad. And guess what? He's in art school now. Okay, now tilt your head to the right. Yeah, like that. Gosh, that dress makes you look like a fairy princess. Who dare to make a princess stay still like a statue for more than one hour? Huh? The charming artist? Shh, it's almost done. I beg your pardon.
It was the final match. My team, the Bulldogs, were neck on neck with our opponent, the Knights. Declan passed me the ball and I sprinted towards the goal, outrunning all the chasing Knights players. Suddenly, this guy cut me off and tackled me to the ground. I managed to break free, lunging towards the goal and scored a triumphant touchdown. My teammates and I were celebrating when I saw the player who tackled me, Cody, talking to the ref and pointing at me. Suddenly, the ref blew his whistle. She's a girl, I could tell when I tackled her. She's a girl, so what? Why is a girl on a boys football team playing as a dude? She's not even registered properly. But she's the best player who scored more points than anybody on the Knights team, alone, and the winning goal. Despite Declan and my teammates standing up for me, the ref announced it was an unfair score and gave the win to the Knights. Hey, it's okay, Riley. We had a good game and a good season because you're here. Right, guys? Yeah, I'm okay, guys. That player, Cody, you sir have made an enemy for life. Hi, I'm Riley, a tomboy through and through. I prefer getting down and dirty on the football field rather than fussing over makeup and boys. Ironically, Nola, the girliest girl you know, is my best friend since childhood, and also the only girlfriend I hang out with. But even then, sometimes Nola's feminine energy got out of control. Like today, when she's crying over some boy she was in a complicated relationship with. We've been together for a while when I saw him seeing another girl today. Yeah, things happen. I swear we locked eyes and he totally ignored me. What a jerk! Riley, you have to help me get back at him! What? No, I don't want to get mixed up in all this toxic drama! You should ask someone else. This guy is so charming that any other girl I'll ask will fall in love with him. But you, Riley, are the only one who would be immune to Cody's charm. Wait, Cody? Cody Nelson? The footballer? Yeah, I told you about him before! Shoot. I should have listened to Nola's boy dramas before, but whatever. Right. What Cody did to you is absolutely outrageous. We gotta teach him a lesson. And for you, Nola, I got your back. Okay, the plan is to ruin his image in front of other girls and make him fall in love with you all at the same time. And then we'll dump him right away, breaking his little heart. But we need to give you a makeover as he only has eyes for girly girls. Nola then called Halsey, a makeup artist from the school over. Yeah, we definitely can seduce a guy with this. I bet lots of girls are falling for you instead. Nola and Halsey then dragged me into a clothing store. The minute I saw racks lined with dresses, my first instinct was to run. I had to try on dozens of dresses, and Halsey trained me to walk like a lady. They even talked about a curtsy. Who curtsies anymore? Then Halsey taught me how to slow dance, which I quickly mastered, but they didn't seem impressed. Halsey suddenly grabbed my waist and took the lead. I was following her steps when, OMG, they look so cute, eek! Only girls understand each other. What? Do we look like a couple to them? Stay cool, Riley, this is just for revenge. Nola's plan better be worth it. The next day, I brought my princess makeover to school, ready for Cody, when, hey, you look familiar. Have I met you before? Oh shoot, it's him. Did he recognize me from the match? I know, must have seen you in my dreams. Phew, false alarm. Cody then asked for my number and we started going out. During the dates, I was so nervous without Halsey and Nola. Okay, Riley, act proper. You're not in your natural habitat. Gosh, you look like an actual princess. Another time, my mouth watered at the burger on the menu, but despite starving, I tried to keep calm and had to order a salad instead. Aw, only a salad? You eat like a little birdie. <sighs> it's exhausting to be a girl. But after all the dates with me, Cody hasn't announced anything official between us. Is it his natural instinct to be flirting with girls? Ugh, Nola's plan's obviously not working. I gotta take matters into my own hands. So I secretly poured some estrogen powder into Cody's protein shake and texted Nola to come see the show. Ha, <laughs> look at the way he dunks the ball. Let's see if he could still be Prince Charming now. Later, he clashed with another player, fell to the ground rolling and whimpering in pain like a baby. I was satisfied for today. Suddenly, I saw Declan walking over and he sat right next to me. Oh no, my buddy can't see me in this embarrassing look. Just then, a basketball came hurtling towards me when Declan's quick reflexes got me behind him and caught the ball with his free hand. Are you alright? Yeah, thanks to this. Friend, here. <laughs> Say, what is a pretty girl like you doing in a sports event like this? Thanks for saving my girlfriend. I can handle it from here. Thank God you're okay, Riley. Aw, he's so sweet, so soft and cute. What? Would you stop saying he's soft and cute? He's not that kind of man. You're right. He's a manly man. We're so sorry, Cody. We didn't mean anything by it. Wow, I didn't know such a little girl like you had such a big voice. I'm so happy to have you by my side. 
Hey, Riley, would you come to the fundraiser carnival with me? I'll make an announcement to everyone there. Wait, was this guy serious? When I got home that night, I saw Declan waiting outside on the porch. I looked at him and then down at my outfit and back to him in panic. So that really was you back there. So you really did recognize me. Why didn't you say anything back there? You looked so nervous and acted like you didn't know me, so I didn't want to embarrass you. Anyway, when did you start going out with Cody? Why change so much for him? I explained everything to Declan, the whole revenge plot for Nola and how I'm doing this to get back at Cody for taking away our championship. Well, the Bulldogs were in the wrong for letting you play in the first place. It was a men's final. I don't care. He has to pay for it. Then I stormed inside. I gotta stand my ground. But Nola was there already sitting on my bed. I heard the whole thing. Makes sense now why you are suddenly interested in the plan. Anyway, whatever you're in it for, your main goal is to ruin Cody's reputation. Don't get sidetracked. Okay, guess I have to attend the carnival with Cody then. On the day of the carnival, I saw Cody waiting for me at the entrance. But I couldn't show up looking like this without Halsey. She was dancing her heart out at Coachella, all the way in California. Suddenly, Cody and I locked eyes. I frantically looked for my nearest exit, but Cody was coming quick. Suddenly, I felt an arm wrap around my waist and turn me around. It was Declan? I saw Cody give up and walk away. Other girls were trying to approach him, but he just declined them. Was he still looking for me? Maybe he's not the bad guy Nola painted for me. See, he doesn't deserve the whole revenge plot against him. Yeah, I didn't expect that. He seems to like you a lot, and you should just stop this and be yourself. Declan and I shared a brief moment of silence. Under the sunset glow, Declan looks so charming. Has he always looked like this? You suddenly notice how handsome I am? I mean, yeah, you could be quite a catch. How come no one's tried to sweep you off your feet yet? Maybe they have, but none of them have ever been interesting enough. Besides, I already have eyes for someone else. Huh? Um, I, uh, I need to grab a bite. I'm starving. Bye. Declan's just a buddy I've known for ages. Why was my stomach doing a cartwheel just then? Ah! Oh, it's just you. Mission success. Huh? I just saw Cody post you as his official girlfriend. Nola was right. Cody posted his official announcement about us. Now all you have to do is dump him in public. Nola, I have to tell you something. This has gone on for too long. I'm sick of being someone I'm not. And I don't think Cody's that bad of a guy. He totally is. You're not falling for him, are you? Don't disappoint me, Riley. In the next morning, Nola brought Halsey over, saying it was cultural exchange day today at school. The perfect place and time to dump Cody. Too tired to start a fight with Nola. Ugh, I had to go along with it. At school, I stumbled upon Declan. He asked me to join him in the eating competition. It was kind of awkward after I ran away from him yesterday, but such an attractive offer. How could I say no? Man, I was born to do this. We were the last two standing in the competition, but Declan gave up and I won. I wasn't even thinking and I hugged him automatically. When I realized what I'd done, I let go of him, but my heart was racing. Could it have been the adrenaline of eating 12 huge burritos? After the competition, Declan and I were walking off all the food when we stumbled upon Cody. 12 extra extra large burritos in 15 minutes? You won this? Cody! No, this is his! What are you doing with him, anyway? You're my girlfriend. You don't even know Riley for who she is. She's mine. Hold on now, guys. What on earth are you talking about? Don't listen to him. Let's go. You're not going with him. What do you mean? Stop! Let go of me! You're annoying me! This guy is so crazy. We gotta go. Now you're telling him I'm crazy? Cody, Riley is the girl you outed during the Bulldogs vs. Knights game. She's just trying to act girly and doing all this to get back at you. Cody was shocked and looked at me waiting. Uh, it's true, Cody. I started all this to get back at you. It just seemed so unfair. I'm just as good as any of the boys on the field. I worked my butt off for that game and I scored the winning goal just to have it stripped away from me. Riley, actually, I was just so stressed that day and the Knights were losing, but I didn't do it to discriminate against you in the game. I'm so sorry for doing it to you. I was taken aback by his apology. It was so sincere and honest. <laughs> it's a pity. What is? I actually fell so hard for this girly you. Aw, that's sweet, Cody. Tell you what, I'll make it up to you by bringing my real self to prom. And if you like this look right now, I know just who to introduce you to. <laughs> deal. By the way, if I'd known sooner, I wouldn't have acted so poorly towards Declan. He seemed really hurt when he chose my side. I felt horrible about what I'd said to Declan. Even if he didn't agree with what I was doing, he was always there for me. But I acted like my best buddy in the world was a jerk in front of Cody. 
I was feeling all gloomy in my bedroom when Halsey showed up and asked to sleep over. Whatever, make yourself at home. Just leave me alone, okay? Actually, I can't. I saw the fight this afternoon between Declan and Cody. Gotta say, kinda admire Declan for speaking his heart. Unlike someone. What do you mean? Come on, you like Declan, don't you? Huh? N no, we're just homies. Oh yeah? So what you're feeling for Declan is also the same as the other homies of yours? What Halseed said made me think about recent moments I had with Declan. When he protected me from the basketball, when he held me at the carnival, and when I accidentally hugged him at the competition. My heart acted so weird. My feelings for Declan are definitely different from anyone else. Idiot, you do like him. But what you did this afternoon must have hurt him a lot. What should I do now? Why not ask him to the dance? That's right, I got to redeem myself and make up with Declan, but I still couldn't face him and talk right now. So the next morning, I prepared a letter to send Declan. In the letter, I told him how I realized that I had feelings for him and that I wanted to take him to prom. Then Nola stormed into my room. Why didn't you dump the guy as planned? I explained to her that Cody's actually a confirmed good guy and insisted that she goes to prom. Plus, I had a big surprise for her. I also revealed that I have feelings for Declan and I'm going to send this letter to him. After I told her that, Nola's face perked up and she suggested that she help hand deliver the note just in case Declan was still mad at me. But days passed and I hadn't heard anything from Declan. I guess he was really mad at me and couldn't bring himself to reply to my letter. I really was horrible to him. Halsey came over, cheered me up and suggested that we go to prom together instead. That really cheered me up and I agreed to go with her. She gave me another makeover, but this time it was more natural. I felt more myself. Halsey and I arrived at prom and I was confused and disappointed to see Declan showing up with Nola? Neither of them told me they were going together. Right then, Cody appeared. Hey Riley, you look great. The natural look really suits you. Thanks. Now, I have someone you should meet. Are you happy now, Riley? Being with your so-called enemy? Turns out I didn't know you at all. After I poured my heart out in that letter, he's still so mad at me that he'd attack me like this? I couldn't stand for it, so I fought back and we broke out in an argument. Enough! What is wrong with you, Declan? You didn't reply to her letter and still have the audacity to be mad at her? What letter? Halsey and I turned towards Nola and after a moment of nothing, Nola burst into tears. I hate you, Riley. You promised you'd help me get back at Cody. Then you abandoned me completely. So I didn't give the letter to Declan. Nola, I never abandoned you. When I realized that Cody was a good guy, I wanted to reintroduce you to him so you both could have a fresh start. So you were going to introduce me to Nola? You like her style, don't you? Yeah, but she thinks I'm a playboy. And she went as far as to create this whole revenge plot against me. This is all your fault for chasing after me and then dropping me for some other girl. Do you know how disheartening that is? I thought you didn't like me, so I moved on. Back then, I just tried to play hard to get. If only you tried a little harder, I'd have let you know. I didn't understand before, but I get it now. Can we start over? I'd like that. The DJ started to play a slow song, and Declan suddenly pulled me in to dance with him. So, that letter, what did it say? It said that I'm sorry for not realizing my feelings earlier. Then, I confess my love to you and asked you to prom. Well then, here's my response. Riley, I liked you the minute I set my eyes on you. I wanted to do everything with you. I wanted to hang out, I wanted to play football with you, and I wanted to be by your side every moment of my waking hour. I could never figure out how you felt, so I hid my feelings for you. At that moment, Declan and I were the only two people in the world. We danced throughout the whole night, and I felt complete. And that's why you should just speak your heart, everyone. If you want to hear my story, comment Halsey's story. And I'll see you then. Okay, animators, you can continue. Bonjour! I'm Chloe, and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment- BOO! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment! <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. And he's a massive pain in my- uh -huh. Anyway... I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only, dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. 
He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine, until our parents lost everything in stocks, and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night, I went downstairs to get some water and saw Mom and Dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day, I told them that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother. Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric... Well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals, and even got a part-time job in a patisserie. While he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh, such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my Nice trip. But this is more urgent. So I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money. Just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? B but where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad? Duh. Check it out. That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry, but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity? Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. 
Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh, M, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. M. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts. Through fear, your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob-level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's off and away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine. He's really sweet, and his smile's as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment. So I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. To my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone. Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough. I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore. Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How is I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, Mom and Dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave his all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned, and he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him, so we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately, so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip-sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. 
I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. But halfway through the song, the stage lights suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. W what the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along? And when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you. Uh, uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the excess money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do. Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. He's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew, all that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. Thanks to Cedric rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A mail from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. 
And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on the way to bring you a wonderful opportunity.